taking on the Iowa State Cyclones. The Iowa State Pro Set offense is averaging 307 yards per game this season. And the nationally ranked defense has been stellar. They've allowed just 121 yards rushing in two games, the fewest in 46 years. As good as the ISU defense is, its kicking game is not. Last week, three of four field goal attempts were missed in a 17-10 loss against Iowa. Meanwhile, Northern Illinois running back A.J. Harris is averaging 116 yards a game, while quarterback Bill Horvath, who's subbing for the injured starter Josh Holdy, has thrown for 367 yards. Can the Huskies break through the ISU defense, or will the Cyclones weather the storm? Northern Illinois and Iowa State battle next on FSN. It's time for college football, as today, Northern Illinois plays Iowa State. Well, good morning, everyone, with Gary Howe, a former Pittsburgh Steeler and Colorado Buffalo. This is B.J. Shaven, and Gary, this is a big game for both of these two teams. Absolutely. Northern Illinois, not as big as Iowa State. Northern Illinois needs to win the MAC to get to a bowl game. Let's now go down to the field and join our third member of our broadcast crew, Karen Schulte. Karen? All right, well, Coach, you have an opportunity to go 2-1 and one today, but uh, the Huskies are a pretty good team coming in here, Dames. There's no doubt about it. You know, they've won 11 of their last 14 games. They're very physical, very confident. Uh, they play every bit as good on the road as they do at home. They've shown that through the last couple of seasons. So we've got our hands full. We're going to have to get off to a great start. This is going to be a full four-quarter football game, no doubt about it. What are the top two keys for your team today? Well, we've got to continue to take care of the football. You know, you can't give them uh, short fields with their offense because we're turning it over. We don't have any turnovers in two games. Um, you know, sooner or later that'll happen, but we've got to limit those turnovers. And it's going to be really important that we gang tackle today. we got a great offense coming at us, the uh, running back, the receivers. Even though the quarterback's a backup, he's taking every snap this year. And we're going to have to do a great job and hopefully get some defensive turnovers. Well, your defenses look good so far. Good luck to you today. Thanks a lot. Great to be with you. Coach Dan McCartney, back to you guys. Well, for the Huskies, Gary, you take a look at them. They're Thank led you. by one guy in offense right now in A.J. Harris. A.J. Harris, believe this or not, great position for him. He won the 110 high hurdles at State of Illinois. He's very good running back. Plus, there's another guy who's converted to linebacker, and that'd be the beast, Brian Atkinson. Yeah, the beast, believe this or not, he was a walk-on, has now become the stud in the middle of the defensive uh, linebacker core. We well, take a look at Iowa State. Well, they wanted to find one general on the field this year, but they've had to rely on two. One in particular is Brett Meyer. He'll get the start today. Brett Meyer is a lot like Randall Cunningham. He's got a lot of the uh, same skills and uh, has done very, very exceptional this year. A guy who will see time is Austin Flynn. All he does is throw touchdown passes. Yeah, you know, he gets he gets uh, Meyer in there to take him, wear him out, and he comes in there and makes a big play. On the defensive side of the ball, it's a heartwarming story for Iowa State. Tyson Smith back in the lineup at defensive end. He's looked good so far. You bet. Tyson Smith came in and started playing as a freshman. Uh, last year got injured, sat out, took a redshirt year. Now he's a redshirt senior. Back out of defense in two sacks in two games, potentially being all Big 12 player. One of the guys he'll be chasing today is Northern Illinois quarterback Bill Horvath. We'll have more coming up in a moment. You're watching College Football here on FSN. Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at FoxMovieChannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries and behind-the-scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film-loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th Century Fox Movies. FoxMovieChannel.com This is Fuel TV, the network dedicated to the world of action sports. 
featuring skateboarding, surfing, BMX, freestyle moto, snowboarding, and wakeboarding. Only on Fuel TV can you experience the energy and danger that define action sports. Fuel TV, action sports television. Next week, on an all new Rescue Me, TV Guide raves, it's must see TV. Hilarious, wrenching, and raw. Don't smoke it in the truck, that's gonna work. Powerfully entertaining. Chief, I need some help here now! Hot as a four alarm fire. One of the best shows yet from cable's most daring network. <laughs> I'm a fireman, man. Come on. Rescue me. All new next week. Only on FX. Check local listings. Major League Baseball on Fox. And he can keep on running to New York. That ball is gone. Can you believe that's it? The baseball memories live forever. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. This year's premier events are only on Fox. Fox Saturday Baseball every Saturday on your local Fox station. The best damn sports show period. Weeknights on FSN. It's the Mac against the Big 12 as Northern Illinois facing Iowa State here at Jack Trice Stadium. Well, Gary, let's take a look at the tail of the tape here. Between these two teams, they stack up well against one another. Absolutely. You know, Northern Illinois is coming in here. They've got 100 plus yards, 142 average yards per game rushing. Iowa State stopping them around 60. So we'll see. It's going to be a good game. It should be. We'll have the kickoff coming up next. Meet Bob. Bob went to Arizona. His friend went to Nebraska. And their other friend, Florida State. Now they all live together in L.A. So how do they follow their favorite college teams? With Fox College Sports, featuring over 800 NCAA games each year on three regionally aligned channels. FCS Pacific, FCS Central, and FCS Atlantic. All the games that matter in one powerful package. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Fox College Sports, where college never ends. NFL Sunday returns this September. X marks powerful stories. X marks explore Sundays only on the National Geographic Channel. Jack Dry Stadium, the site of this encounter here this afternoon between Iowa State and Northern Illinois. And Gary, what a great crowd here for this. Big 12 MAC matchup here today. Absolutely, man. All these areas right alongside of the stands, not only in the stands, are getting full. It's going to be a beautiful day. Right now, it's still a little overcast, but I think it's going to break and end up being a great day for these guys. It certainly should. And you know, both of these two teams are pretty jacked up for this contest today. Oh, absolutely. This is a this is going to be a great game. If you're not watching a game, this is the game you want to be watching because uh, both these teams are just fantastic. I think they both have a lot of the same coaching styles, a lot of the same player types, and um, you're going to, it's just it's going to be great. They really get after one another, too, and they're very comparable. As we mentioned, both like to run the football, and that's what they really want to do. I know Coach Dan McCarney has been stressing it since day one of the 2004 campaign. They want to get back to a grind them out type of offense. Yeah, you know, that, that it's, it's such a hard thing to do. Both these teams have a, have a very, very strong, very solid defense. Uh, to get a, good, a running game starting hit is going to be very key for, the, for each team. 
And for Coach Joe Novak in Northern Illinois, you know, he's had a grind them out type of offense. You know, the two are very similar to one another because they took over programs uh, that were slumping a lot when they took them over and, and brought some respect back to them, plus some tradition back to both programs. Joe Novak has done one heck of a job for Northern Illinois. He sure has. I'll tell you what, I talked to him last night, and I, I can't believe it came out of his mouth, but he also mentioned, he said, in order to uh, win this game, he says, we're actually going to have to pass the ball a little bit more. <laughs> and that'll be a challenge. We mentioned Phil Horvath getting the start here again this afternoon. Josh Haldy will be out of the lineup. He had a stress fracture that he suffered during fall drills, during two-a-days. Yeah, you know, and uh, he, he did. He tried to come back against the Maryland game. I think he played three plays and ended up getting tweaked over on the sideline. And, uh, you know, I don't know how much does that set you back? I don't know. I guess it all depends on the injury. But, uh, you know, I, I see him coming back here uh, in the next week or two. I'll tell you, the guy's tough. He's an awesome leader. And uh, yeah, how big of a leader he is, traveled here with the team to be there on the sideline to support his teammates. Iowa State will be kicking off. Brian Jansen, a walk-on just a week before practice. Got on to the team, and lo and behold, hey, you're going to be kicking. Deep back to receive will be Garrett Wolf, along with Lionel Hickabottom. So we're just about ready to go. It's Iowa State and Northern Illinois. You know, BJ, I was talking to Coach Novak yesterday, and he had a Hickabottom. Nickname is Boogie. <laughs> so let's see if Boogie gets Boogie in here. He likes to shake it on down. It'll be Wolf taking it about eight yards deep in the end zone. What a kick by Jansen to get things going for Iowa State. That's great kick coverage right there. Oh, <laughs> that's the best you can get. You guaranteed only a 20-yard return out of that one. So it will be Northern Illinois' offense out on the field first. And here's a team that has four or five starters back on their offensive line. They've had a 1,000-yard rusher six of the last eight years, so they really love to run the football. They'll take it first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Just getting underway. The give will be to A.J. Harris, and he'll squirm ahead for about five. I look like the, uh, Iowa State's defense had, had him stopped right there, but uh, I'll tell you, one of the biggest keys on the defensive side of the ball, you need to stop that guy at first contact. A little additional yards like this are what can kill you in the game. We'll take a look at Northern Illinois' starting lineup in just a moment. The lineup with a single setback, it's Harris, second and five. Horvath, the pass, and it's picked off by Mosier of Iowa State, and he'll get to the five and into the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa State. There you go, BJ. That's that defense they've been talking about, stopping those teams from getting any yards. It's starting early. Nick Mosier. Let's take a look at this one again, Gary. Horvath kind of telegraphed the pass yeah, to Sheldon. That's exactly it. Boy, he was looking at him from the snap of the ball. And linebacker read that just great step in front of him and took it off. First Iowa State defensive touchdown since 2003 against OU. And the extra point is no good. Wide right. Boy, I'll tell you what, those points like that can really play a factor in a game. I tell you. You know, I don't know if he's still shaking a little bit from last week, missing those three from inside the 30, but uh, he, he got to make those kicks. Let's take a look at this one again here. Uh, look at the kick. Gary, see, you're not a, I know you weren't a kicker, but let's break this one down scientifically here if you can. Well, I would say probably, you know, he probably maybe saw that pressure coming in from the left side like that and ended up pushing the ball. That's got to drive Iowa State head coach Dan McCarney nuts. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah, I, sh I would certainly think so. Um, you know, having a great kicker last year and then coming in with uh, a guy that uh, you just can't, uh, you can't count on every time. And, you know, those, want those uh, extra points, they need to be automatic. So Iowa State with an early 6 nothing lead on Northern Illinois. And for the Huskies, they've got to regroup offensively in a hurry here. Oh, absolutely. I think... Uh, I think Coach Novak was, uh, you know, doing just what he said. He needed to pass the ball a little bit more and uh, got right after, right there on, uh, what was that, two and second and five, I think. And, uh, you know, good play call. Just uh, telegraphing his throws. He can't be doing that. So Jansen 
That's not a real big confidence builder for Horvath to start this game. No, or for Jansen for that matter either, for yeah, missing absolutely. the extra point. Absolutely. He'll kick off here. The freshman will let it have the ball roll into the end zone. It'll be ruled a touchback. So Northern Illinois will once again have it first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Iowa State fans liking what they're seeing early here, Gary. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, it's starting at start the 20-yard line, is uh, it, it, that's great ball position. It takes a lot for an offense to drive 80 yards, get down there and score some points. You know, I'll tell you what, that kick wasn't very good. Harris again, the lone tailback. Horvath will give it to him. And I believe Sean Moorhead, the first one to meet him for Iowa State, a walk-on for the Cyclones from Mason City. Great defensive play. The guy cut back. Your, pre your uh, contain was right there. Your force came in from the backside. Stopped him right in the mouth. Stopped him right there for, uh, what was that, one-yard gain? It'll bring up second and long. Second and long here for the Huskies. They give us to Harris. He'll gain a couple. It'll bring up third down. Let's take a look at that starting lineup for Northern Illinois. Makes the initial hit for Iowa State. As we see the offensive line here again, four or five starters back. Doug Free anchors that line from the left tackle position. Backs and receivers, A.J. Harris, the aforementioned player. But Brad Seaslack is a guy you got to look out for on third down for Northern Illinois. Third down, five yards to go with the ball at the 25. Play action pass. And it's nearly picked off and a penalty flagged down. Ooh, that's, a, that's a tough call. He was slipping, going for the ball. I don't know if this is a legitimate call, to be honest with you. Coverage on the play for Iowa State. It's a flag by DeAndre the Jackson. Ooh. I don't know, BJ. Let's take a look at this one again, Gary. That's an offense. On the defense, number eight. The offense who takes possession of the ball to spot a foul. Automatic first down. Now, Gary, something different this year in college football. They're saying the number of the player who committed the infraction. You like that? I do like that. I, You know, I, as a player out there, if it's not me making the pod, don't be pointing a finger at me. Oh, it'll make me mad getting that done. But uh, I, I like it. I think it gives an, the fans an opportunity, especially in the stands, an opportunity to hear because they don't always see and not always sure where it's at. And when they can do that, they can focus on who that player is and where it happened on the field. But this time they called it on the wrong player. A.J. Harris will get the carry Thanks. as Brandon Brown will make the tackle. It'll bring up first, second down for Northern Illinois after a gain of five. You see Northern Illinois out there, EJ. They're, they're doing, still running a lot of that trap. They're pulling that inside guard, crossing the formation, trapping that guy. It just doesn't seem like they have the timing down on that still. Looks like that back is slow hitting the hole. Horvath will give it to Harris. And he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Brent Kirby on the tackle. Now let's take a look at the defensive lineup here for Iowa State. Brent Curvey back from an injury he suffered last week. And Cephas Johnson back in the lineup again for Iowa State. Linebackers, Eric Anderson. Nick Mosier picked off a pass earlier, returned it for six. Part of that secondary along with Ellis Hodge. Big third down here for Northern Illinois. From their own 38. Horvath will look to pass. Has a man open, and Chatone Powers will take it beyond the 40. Reaches out for the first down. Don't think he got it, Gary. Oh, absolutely. It looks short. I'll tell you what, that was a great effort on his part trying to get that first down. But uh, great open field tackle. Came up, put the hit on him. Worked really hard not to let him get that extra yard. So Northern Illinois will be forced to punt it away. Anthony Gallagher will be on for the first time. Gallagher in punt formation for Huskies. 
And deep back to receive Todd Miller for Iowa State. Driving kick. Miller gets it at the 25. And he'll be upended at the 31. So Iowa State has a 6-0 lead on Northern Illinois. And their offense will go out on the field for the first time when we come back. You're watching college football here on FSN. Now there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The new network that brings you nearly 150 games from conferences like the Pac-10, Big 12, and more. Plus local coaches shows and news from around the country. This is the network college football fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at foxmoviechannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries and behind the scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th Century Fox Movies. FoxMovieChannel.com Due to time constraints, we will move ahead in our coverage following this commercial break on Fox College Sports. Now there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA. This is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for Daredevils as they enter the Globe of Death. Inside that cage, four men who will risk their lives. Round and round they go, yes, where they'll stop, only their courage knows. Four men working as one. This is the dictionary definition of... Fox NFL Sunday returns this September... We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. Is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise manifest. I'm Eddie Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. I'm number one with up staff. Nobody knows who's staff two, and we can't get a the cockpit. The door won't open. Six nothing Iowa State with the lead. They've got it first and 15 from their own 37 yard line. Meyer will give it to Hicks on the draw. He'll worm his way ahead to gain a couple. Adam Schroeder on the tackle for Northern Illinois. Well, I tell you what, Northern Illinois did a good job. It's what you, there's a technique you call on the draw play. It's called retracing your steps. And they did a great job just coming back, retracing those steps, getting back, and making that play. Defensive line you saw just a moment ago, the starters in the linebacking core. Very good unit right there for Northern Illinois. And in the secondary, Rob Lee, Ray Smith, and then there's Boogie, Lionel Hickenbottom, and Adriel Hansbro. Second down, 11 from the 41 for Iowa State. Out of the shotgun for the first time. They'll give it to Hicks. We'll gain a couple more and we'll bring up third down for Iowa State. Hey, B, let me tell you something. That is the worst play you want to take on a defensive lineman. You've got a trap coming out of the backfield. That guy's got a head of steam. He's got a nice clear view at you. And I'll tell you what, if you're not doing the right technique, if you're not looking at the triangle, you're going to get smacked right in the ear hole and you're not going to know what's going to happen next. 
<laughs> Iowa State with a long third down here. Third and ten from their own 43. Meyer will look to throw. And he's sacked. Boy, coming in to make the play for Northern Illinois was Adriel Hansbrook. Tell you what, you count that sack on coverage in the secondary, I tell you. A, you know, a lot of people think that it's a pressure up front that really th screws things up for the quarterback. But I'll tell you what, I'm, and I could be a little bit biased being a defensive lineman, but I'll tell you what, if you got guys that can get on those receivers right away, get that coverage, it makes my job a lot easier up front as well. Cyclones will be forced to punt it away. Troy Blankenship will get the snap. Dan Sheldon will be back deep to receive. He'll get it and be popped and lose the football. But look out, here comes the hanky. Could be a halo violation here, Gary. I'll tell you what, the, uh, it probably is. But I'll tell you what, Northern Illinois guys, you got two on one. That runner from the outside should not even get be getting close to your returner. Just grit and determination there by Ellis Hobbs. We'll see what this one's all about as the officials confer down on the field. He just plain outran those two guys. Nope, it's a Ooh. penalty against Northern Illinois. Walk in the back. Or a hold. Hmm. We'll see what it's about. After the kick was over, the receiving team, illegal block in the back. Number 10, a foul is penalized half the distance. First down. Tell you what, B.J., those that are the plays that kill 27. you. 27. That penalty against Rob Lee, and now Phil Horvath will bring his unit out onto the field, and they dug themselves a little hole as they have it inside of their own 10-yard line. But great coverage then by Ellis Hobbs, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I can guarantee you the uh, special teams coach would say had that play every, every, every punt. Harris on the carry, and he's dropped for a loss on the play. Nick Leaders with the tackle for Iowa State. Gary, this rush defense for Iowa State really clicking on all cylinders so far this year. You bet. I'll tell you what. You see that block right there? He ended up coming behind that block, making that play. And there's one rule. If you go behind the block, you better make the play, and he did it. Nick Leaders with 96 tackles last year and nearing 200 for his career. Second and long, Harris sees a lot of Cardinal in front of him. And he'll take it back to the near the original line of scrimmage. So it'll bring up third and long here for Northern Illinois. Okay, that Iowa State defense is holding true to his first two weeks. Brought down by number 44, Tim Dobbins. And A.J. Harris would just love to get on track. Tim Dobbins, a part of the tackle for Iowa State. And there's a guy that they brought in as a junior college transfer. He didn't expect to play a whole lot. He came into camp, worked his way towards the starting spot at middle linebacker, and boy, has he really paid big dividends for that defense. I'll tell you what, you, you brought up a great point, BJ. You know, there's some of the best players on these teams are walk-on players. Dobbins came from a junior college on a scholarship. Here's a swing pass to Harris, and he goes nowhere. Tyson Smith. I don't know if that was Tyson Smith's responsibility, but it doesn't matter. He got out there, he made the play. Take a look at this, Gary. Northern Illinois, I don't know if they got that play blocked as well as they wanted to. Oh, there's no way. There's three guys out there ready to smack him in the mouth. So now, Gallagher... Probably won't see him be going back to that one. <laughs> yeah. Gallagher will have to punt it out of his own end zone. He's about a foot in front of the end line. Iowa State's defense has played huge so far. Gallagher will put his foot into it. Miller gets it at his own 45. Down to about the 39-yard line. That's where the Cyclone offense will take over. Cyclones up 6 to nothing over Northern Illinois. We'll have more when we come back. You're watching College Football here on FSN. 
This month on Fox Movie Channel, Making a Scene takes you on the set of two hot new series. See how an episode is made from script to screen. First, you're on location with FX's critically acclaimed Over There. We're telling the story that I think a lot of people are afraid to tell. Then go behind the scenes and behind the bars of the Fox drama Prison Break. That's not a set. Guys died in that chair. It's your ticket to the creative process from start to finish. Making a Scene, only on Fox Movie Channel. X marks powerful stories. X marks Explorer Sundays. Only on the National Geographic Channel. This is Fuel TV, the network dedicated to the world of action sports. Featuring skateboarding, surfing, BMX, freestyle moto, snowboarding, and wakeboarding. Oh, I wanna go. Only on Fuel TV can you experience the energy and danger that define action sports. Fuel TV. Action Sports Television. Next week, on an all-new Rescue Me, TV Guide raves. It's must-see TV. Hilarious, wrenching, and raw. Go smoke it in the truck. That's gonna work. Powerfully entertaining. Chief, I need some men up here now! Hurry! And hot as a four-alarm fire. One of the best shows yet from cable's most daring network. <laughs> I'm a fireman, man. Come on. Rescue Me. All new next week, only on FX. Check local listings. Cyclones leading it six to nothing. Offense back out on the field with 4.50 to go here in the opening quarter. Brett Meyer trying to get this offense going here as Stevie Hicks will be the deep tailback. He'll pass out of this. Has a man, and it's blind. I love that play. That is one of the best plays in college football right there. That's all Todd Blythe does is catch touchdowns. And the Cyclones take a 12-0 lead on Northern Illinois. Gary, here's that play again. Set it up for us. Well, I'll tell you what. It looked like they're going to run down the line for an option. The quarterback fades back out into a drop back. You know, the, the secondary must have been looking at the quarterback because they surely weren't working at Blythe downfield. He was wide open. Touchdown. Brian Jansen on to add the extra point. Chris Love will hold. And this one does go through. Well, maybe they need to roll the ball back there every time to get him to get it through. Who knows? That was a horrible snap. Ball got back there. Great hold by the holder. He grabbed the hold of the ball. Got control. Took off. Iowa State with a 13-0 lead now on Northern Illinois after the touchdown strike. Let's now go down to the sideline and be joined by Karen Schulte with an injury update. Karen? Well, guys, first of all, I can tell you that starting tight end, or ex excuse me, starting nose tackle, Eric Pittman is done for the day for Northern Illinois on that last offensive series for the Cyclones. He went down at midfield, and he has an injury to his right knee. They've iced it. He is still here on the sidelines, but he's going to be done for the day. One comment about Brian Jansen there. After his first missed point after attempt, very first guy to meet him on the sideline was the starting quarterback, Brett Meyer, for the Cyclones. He got in Jansen's face and said, you had your time last week. You didn't cash in. We need you today. I guess he came through. Cert certainly did, Karen, in a big way. Again, Iowa State leading at 13 to nothing, and I know for Pittman, very disappointed that the injury bug is hit him. I'll tell you, you know, that, that, it's funny Karen caught that. You know, you got to you got to understand something. He's a freshman, and he's out there trying to be a leader for sophomore, juniors, and seniors, guys that have been here four years longer than he has, and these guys are listening to him. What's that tell you? Wolf will take it from his own five. And he'll be wrangled down at about the 27-yard line. That's where Northern Illinois will put their offense back out on the field. Just a moment ago, Todd Blythe got his third touchdown pass of the season. That's three touchdown passes in three games. Take a look at the scoring drive here for Iowa State. Just one play, 39 yards. P.J., I thought you that, uh, isn't that usually... Um Flynn's job is to get that to him on that deal. <laughs> and here, here it is, Myers out there throwing that touchdown pass to him. Yeah, the last couple, or the first two games of the year, it's been Austin Flynn <laughs> who's thrown those touchdown passes to get the scoring started for Iowa State. Corvath will give it 
to Wolf in the backfield, and he'll go nowhere. Iowa State, Brandon Brown, part of that solid linebacking crew for Iowa State. He actually had to switch positions this year because when they moved Tyson Smith down to defensive end, Brandon Brown was at the middle. He moved to the outside when Tim Dobbins came in. I mean, that, that's kind of tough to pick that up, isn't it? A different position on defense a little bit. Well, I think so, especially the linebacker, because at linebacker, it's very crucial. Your first, first step is very crucial. And your first step, depending on where you're playing, whether it's weak side linebacker, strong side linebacker, middle linebacker, your steps are different. Your first step's always different. So it's just, it takes a pretty good discipline to be able to do that. Well, we've got the carry, Nick Mosier, with the tackle for Iowa State. And, you know, Gary, for Northern Illinois, we shouldn't be surprised to see them switch running backs in and out. Of course, Joe Novak does that to, to give a little breather to A.J. Harrison Company. One player who is not going to play today for Northern Illinois is Adrian Davis. He's out with an ankle. That ankle. Third and nine for the Huskies. At their own 29. Horvath to put it up. Throws in traffic. What a catch! As Northern Illinois will have it first and 10 inside of the Iowa State 35-yard line. Boy, we got a flag down, too, on this play, BJ. I'll tell you what, that was some great pass protection by the uh, Northern Illinois line. Marcus Perez hauled that ball in. See what this one's about. And it's against the Huskies. Oh, that's got to be heartbreaking right there. Boy, Phil Horvath, though, not afraid to throw it in traffic. <laughs> yeah, very apparent of that. Boy, there was three guys on him. This is costly, though, for the Huskies as they got it inside of the Iowa State 50-yard line for the first time today. And I know that, well, what is Coach Novak thinking about right now? Boy, I, you know, it, it, it's hard to say. You know, I, you can't There's give no up already on the running game. You still got to continue to do it. All right, they waved off the flag, Gary. The initial call was illegal block in the back. It's been that the block in question was a side block and therefore illegal. First down. All right, they explained it. Which block is it? This one right there? That looks, that's not bad enough to call. That's a great, that's great play. I'll tell you what, that's how you get yards after the play. You've got other guys, it's a team effort. You're down there, you're blocking. That gave them an opportunity to make another 15 yards in that play. First and 10 Huskies at their 33 of Iowa State. And they'll give it to Jarrett Wolf as he'll take it down near the 30. Wolf, one of those players for Northern Illinois, really making his way up the depth chart. I mean, he adds a level of, of excitement to this, this Husky offense. I'll tell you what, that's a break they've been looking for all day. Horvath, the play action pass. He'll find his man, and Dan Sheldon will have it near the first down marker. Got it in maybe a yard more as the Huskies are starting to engineer a pretty good drive here. Oh, absolutely. You know, that big play is huge. So it'll be first and 10 for Northern Illinois. Phil Horvath, starting quarterback today, 6'3", sophomore, out of Naperville. In fact, Phil's career right now is kind of going like Josh Haldies did. <laughs> kind of slow and progressing. To give to Wolf, and he's got lots of running room. And he'll get in, but there's a flag down. I'll tell you one thing going through his mind right now is the fact of why do we have so many penalties so early in the game? Certainly. Hasn't been a clean game so has far. not. <laughs> the officials conferring down to the field. Coach Novak won six. During the run, illegal block in the back by the offense, number 84. The foul is penalized 10 yards from by the foul. Repeat first down. All right, so that's a costly pen penalty for Northern Illinois. I'll tell you what, you can't win, keep shooting yourself in the foot like that. So it'll be first and 10 for the Huskies at the 21 of Iowa State. 
Horvath gives it to Wolf, and again, big running room up the middle, and he'll score. <laughs> Joe Novak says, hey, it worked once. Let's do it again. Exact same play. Wow, that was a huge pull for Northern Illinois, and Wolf gets into the end zone again. He scores a lot when he gets in. We mentioned the level of excitement that he brings, and well, his offensive line helped him out there. Oh, there's no question about it. They blew a hole big enough. Hey, I could have ran through there, BJ. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> maybe. And the extra point is up and in there by Chris Nendick. So it's 13-7 with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Iowa State with a six-point lead. Yeah, that started off right there, BJ. Another bad kickoff. We were able to return it. They started at the 35 as opposed to the 20. Percentages for scoring go up a lot higher in a 15-yard period. Certainly does. And for Coach Novak, he has to like that his team getting back into this contest with a long drive. Oh, absolutely. He, he needed to do it. They started right before that. We're pushed back on the 11-yard line. Back to the 11-yard line. They're backed up. Probably one of the hardest pressure, pressure plays in the game of football is to be backed up. Look at that hole. And it didn't look pretty from Horvath backing up. Kind of stuttered a little bit. But the end result was perfect for Northern Illinois. Scoring drive here, seven plays, 72 yards, and Wolf again on that 21-yard touchdown run. BJ, that was interesting. I was talking to uh, the ISD at Northern Illinois, Mike Corsick, and he was telling me, he says, last year they had almost a 98% uh, 98% scoring percentage when they were in the red zone last year. This will be Thais Thompson for Iowa State. He'll take it out beyond the 20, and that's where the Iowa State offense will take over. So the Cyclone offense back out onto the field, and there's a flag down on the kickoff. Another flag, Gary. Another flag. I'll tell you what, for a coach, uh, you know, for Joe Novak, the this team that he has works really hard. And the only way you can... All right, I'm sorry. I'm waiting for the call there from the referee. They didn't hear him. However, you know, they work so hard, and they put a lot of um, you know, effort into what they've got going on. And effort is the key word for the Northern Illinois team. It really is. And when you put that kind of effort in there, you can get costly mistakes like this. These guys are trying to go for it. They realize they're down. They've got the momentum now. They want to get it done. Mistakes happen, but I'll tell you what, they still need to get it going. Those penalties are, you know how many times they probably run that kickoff every day? Probably a dozen times a day that guy's kicking off in practice all week long. There's no, there, there's no reason for it. Go back up five yards and do it again. This time, Thompson will take it out as 15. Thais upended at the 29. Ball came loose, but the ground caused it, and the official right there to spot it. So Iowa State's offense will take over. First and 10 from their own 29-yard line. Again, a lot of excitement already in this football game, Gary. We've kind of gotten what we've expected. Difference in the game right now. Uh, Interception return for a touchdown by Nick Mosier of Iowa State on the opening drive for the Huskies. You take a look at total yards offensively. That long drive by the Huskies, the difference in that category. Oh, absolutely. I'll tell you what, we told you guys to be in for a great game if you tuned in. And I'll tell you what, you're getting a great game. Both these teams are playing really well. One of the interesting things here is, you know, you want to talk about turnovers. Northern Illinois, I believe, was ranked number six in uh, takeaway ratio last year uh, during their season, 2003 season. Tyus Thompson now will stay in the backfield. We'll take it ahead for a couple of yards. And how about Brett Meyer? How much confidence is he getting game in, game out? You take a look at him. He doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. He doesn't. That, you know, that's, I think that's got a lot to say for coaching. I think it's got a lot to say for him as, a, as an individual and his preparation in there. Um, you know, he seems to run that. He, he seems to be the general out there, and he's taking, taking control, and uh, he's doing the right things. Second and seven. Meyer will put it in the air. And in and out of the hand of his intended target. And John Davis. 
Rob Lee on the coverage for Northern Illinois. So the pass defense for Northern Illinois really hasn't been tested a whole lot. How's that offensive line? One of the areas we're going to take a look at for Iowa State, Gary, how are they holding up right now? Well, I think they're doing a fantastic job. They've, uh, you know, in the past I thought they were a little speculative. Uh, you know, they're keeping that quarterback clean. There's nobody getting through to them. Third and seven. And we've got more penalties down. Penalty flags on the field. This will be the fifth penalty of the first quarter. We had some. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, number 53. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Kale Stubby with the movement for Iowa State. Now that's third and even longer for Iowa State. And how many third and 12 plays do you have? You've got one. <laughs> and, and that receiver better go 13 yards. Meyer will line Iowa State up out of the shotgun. Bringing the heat. Has a man who will go up for it and can't get it, but a flag will be thrown on the play. Could get pass interference here. Let's take a look at this again. Gary, what do you think? Well, I don't know. They brought the heat. They, you know, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Meyer stayed right in there. Pressure coming on him. I don't know about that play. I don't know about that call. Britt Davis with the coverage for Northern Illinois. And the pass interference call on against Iowa way. State. Blankenship will be back on to punt. This is huge. The momentum's all on the side of Northern Illinois right now. Penalty was declined, so Northern Illinois just wants to get that football back. Nine men on the line, and Blankenship will get this punt underway. Dan Sheldon will take it from his 32. Weaving his way out of traffic. Sheldon on the run. He'll take it beyond the 45-yard line. A good field position for Northern Illinois. That is fantastic. I'll tell you what, Northern Illinois has got the momentum, like I said before. And uh... <clears throat> Dan Sheldon, a playmaker for Northern Illinois. And, boy, he is very shifty. He is. I'll tell you what, though, that scares me to death whenever I see a guy do that. They're turning to a blind side. There's, <laughs> you don't know who's standing there. You know, you know you might, helmet might be looking. You might be looking out the ear hole. Gary, you're probably used to that when you walk down the sidewalk. Everybody coming up, going to get out of his way. <laughs> Here we go. First and 10 for Northern Illinois at their own 47. They'll give it to Wolf. <laughs> Nick Mosier will make the tackle for Iowa State. Nick Mosier, number nine, makes the initial hit for Iowa State. It'll bring up second down for the Huskies. Boy, Northern Illinois has been running off tackle with a lot of plays here, probably by design, because Iowa State was doing a good job early in this contest, plugging that middle up. Looks like whatever they did, they went back to it. Second and eight. Huskies will keep it on the ground with Wolf. And he'll gain a couple more, and it'll bring up third down as he's held shy of that first down marker. You see he was over there by that plate, don't you? Tyson Smith was right over there. That guy's fast. Got good football awareness. You may see him in the NFL next year. And that was the last play of the first quarter. It'll be Iowa State leading it 13-7 over Northern Illinois when we come back. Meet Bob. Bob went to Arizona. His friend went to Nebraska. And their other friend, Florida State. Now they all live together in L.A. So how do they follow their favorite college teams? With Fox College Sports, featuring over 800 NCAA games each year on three regionally aligned channels. FCS Pacific, FCS Central, and FCS Atlantic. All the games that matter in one powerful package. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Fox College Sports, where college never ends. 
Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at FoxMovieChannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries, and behind-the-scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film-loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th century Fox movies. FoxMovieChannel.com Due to time constraints, we will move ahead in our coverage following this commercial break on Fox College Sports. <laughs> NFL Sunday returns this September. The best damn sports show period. Weeknights on FSN. Now there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The new network that brings you nearly 150 games from conferences like the Pac-10, Big 12, and more. Plus local coaches shows and news from around the country. This is the network college football fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. Is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise, not a test. I'm Eddie Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. I'm number one is up staff. Nobody knows who's staff two, and we can't get the cockpit. The door won't open. Joe Novak's going to go for it. Big fourth down, two yards to go at the Iowa State 17-yard line. Harris will get the carry. He'll lunge forward but won't get it. He needed to get it down to the 15-yard line. They mark him down at the 16, so he's held a yard shot. Robertson makes the tackle and... Let's take a look at this again, Gary. Iowa State's defense just standing strong in the middle. I tell you what, you can see there. You see how they get underneath that offensive lineman's pads that got them up in the air? When you get them up, they get the pads up in the air, That they don't have the power in their legs to get that driving going. And uh, if A.J. Harris would have made that, he would have done it all on his own. I guarantee you that. Iowa State heading into this game allowed just 121 yards of rushing. Fewest since 1958 in a two-game stance, and that's I was against some pretty good competition in Northern Iowa out of the Division I AA. You can run the football pretty well. And then, of course, the Iowa Hawkeyes last week. Meyer back in at quarterback. He'll run the play action. Plenty of time. Still looking. Has a man, and it's in and out of the hands of his intended target. I'll tell you what. You know, there's a lot of things that happened the last year they weren't doing it. That court, You see that receiver coming back to the quarterback underneath that pressure? That is key. That's huge. Bad part is, look at that. The longer you got to hang on to the ball, more potential for penalty. Another flag. Looks like it could be an ineligible receiver downfield. We'll see what the officials call here because Meyer had a decision to make, Gary, and it was whether to throw the football or run with it. And the penalty is against Iowa State. Here it is. Receivers. Downfield on the offense during a legal forward pass. Numbers 52 and 53. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. And a lot of time for Brett Meyer here. Got great pickup block there, but Absolutely. they probably thought it was time to 
get downfield. That's why the linemen were running down there. Didn't think Meyer was going to hold it back there that long and fire it. Hey, these passing, these these guys, they get a feel for that through through three years of playing. You know, I know how long this play's supposed to take. I know when the ball's going to be supposed to be gone. They don't have eyes in the back of their head. They're looking, and they're going on instinct. That's part, that's part of the game. These mistakes happen, especially when the receivers are covered the way they are. First and 15, they'll run the draw with Hicks. He'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit by Jason Hawkins. In fact, the MAC player of the week last week on the defense for Northern Illinois. You know, BJ, getting back here before the break, we were talking about effort and how these guys do it. Do you know Northern Illinois' players, every single one stays there during the summer? Northern Illinois will pay for their tuition to go to school, but it's their responsibility to take care of their housing, take care of their food, and every single player makes that commitment to stay there in the offseason. In fact, one player just joined them late in the summer. We'll talk about him in just a moment. He was a walk-on. Now he's starting. Meyer to throw, but he'll take off. He'll gain a few yards and it'll bring up third and long for Iowa State as he's upended by Javon Lee. Javon Lee, number 47, trips him up near the 16. Now this time, Gary, he decided to, to tuck it and he run. He did. You know, there's, it was wide open in the middle of the field. I think, you know, maybe his view was blocked by the, uh, you know, for that, that linebacker by the referee, but you, you, you just never know. You got a sense as a quarterback, you pull it down. Maybe he's a little jittery right now. Things aren't going his way in the passing game. But, you know, he's done really well. There's no reason for him to get nervous right now. He can't do it all himself, and I think as a freshman, as a leader, you think he got to. Hey, there's a lot of football left. Take your time. Stand, look at that. Stand it in there. Great, great pass, great catch. Let it happen. Let the play develop for you. They certainly did, and that is Todd Miller with the reception. First and 10 Iowa State, Lionel Higginbottom with the tackle for Northern Illinois. Big third down conversion there for Iowa State. Something that they struggled with in their first two games is on third down. Well, you know, that's a gamble that Novak took. You know, you, you, you take that chance, you got the momentum going for you. Right now, right now you got to step up to the plate. You want to keep that momentum. You know, this, this it's starting to roll back. You got to put the, you got to put the kibosh on it. You got to get it stopped here. Shotgun formation, Scales and Hicks in the backfield. It'll be the pitch to Scales, and he'll fall down. The freshman out of West Des Moines. I'll tell you what, that play should have gone because of <laughs> two against one, something's got to give. And I'll tell you what, that guy did a great job. He sat there, he waited for it, he waited for it, he made the. Let's take a look at this again. Gary is so close to breaking it up. You know, Scales doesn't slip. Maybe that ball goes for a while. Getting credited with the tackle was Ray Smith for Northern Illinois. And now a timeout will be taken by Iowa State. 8.20 to go in the first half. Cyclones with a six-point advantage. You're watching college football here on FSN. Now there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports, the network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA, this is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for Daredevils as they enter the Globe of Death. Inside that cage, four men who will risk their lives. Round and round they go, yes, where they'll stop only their courage knows. Four men working as one. This is the dictionary definition of... Fox NFL Sunday returns this September... Major League Baseball on Fox. And he can keep on running to New York. That ball is gone. Can you believe it? Your baseball memories live forever. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. This year's premier events are only on Fox. Fox Saturday Baseball every Saturday on your local Fox station. The Dr. 
Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week on FSN is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Cyclones with a six point advantage and the home crowd's liking it. Second and eight for Iowa State at their own 40 yard line. Meyer rolling out as his man, Davis. First down, Iowa State. Higginbottom with another tackle for Northern Illinois. He's had to make a few already today. Well, you know, they got in that attack 4 3 defense. All that's going to do, that's going to push things to the outside. They're going to keep going. They're going to keep pushing the ball to the outside, the outside, the outside in the running game. And obviously, in the, in the passing game, your, your secondary is your only hope. So, But uh, in the running game, you know, he's had to step up. He's done a great job. He's made a lot of great plays. They're not missing the tackles. They're stopping them on initial hit. So that's a great job. Cyclone, 74 yards through the air. Meyer again will look to throw. Sets up. He's going to launch it deep. Blythe. Touchdown. <laughs> there we go again. Boy, he can't catch a ball. It's the touchdown ball. Todd Blythe reception to touchdown ratio has to be astronomical. <laughs> Let's take a look at this one again. Great play fake for Meyer. Boy, and Britt Davis on the coverage, and he's given up about a foot on Blythe. Boy, is Meyer pretty happy about this or what? Look at the red shirt freshman. Look at him. He's sprinting down the field. That's two red Boy, shirt Blythe freshmen. making these guys look like heroes, isn't he? Now for the extra point, Brian Jansen. One out of two on the day. It's up. And again. 20 to 7. Iowa State with a lead on Northern Illinois. We'll have more when we come back. You're watching college football here on FSN. This month on Fox Movie Channel, Making a Scene takes you on the set of two hot new series. See how an episode is made from script to screen. First, you're on location with FX's critically acclaimed Over There. We're telling the story that I think a lot of people are afraid to tell. Then go behind the scenes and behind the bars of the Fox drama Prison Break. That's not a set. Guys died in that chair. It's your ticket to the creative process from start to finish. Making a Scene, only on Fox Movie Channel. The best damn sports show period, weeknights on FSN. Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at FoxMovieChannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries and behind-the-scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film-loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th Century Fox Movies. FoxMovieChannel.com Cyclones with a 13-point advantage on Northern Illinois. On a big touchdown strike for Iowa State. A 47 yards from Meyer to Blythe. Higginbottom. And Wolf deep back to receive. Hanson will put his foot into it, and this one will go out of bounds, and Northern Illinois will get good field position out of this one, Garrett. I'll tell you what, he's been doing this all day. I think, uh, you, you know, it's hard. I, I've never kicked a ball, and I, I, I probably procedure. couldn't even kick it 10 yards. On the kicking team. But I'm going to tell you, Free kick out of bounds. you got it. You got to get this Receiving part down. Team takes possession the, the field yards position from a kick like that is just astronomical. You you just got an opportunity. Joe Novak took a took a gamble here. ISU took it. Started getting momentum back in their way. And right now the wind's just kind of going out of the sails a little bit. 
field position. You know, an opportunity, and, and here it is. They, you know, Northern Illinois is now going to think that they've got the momentum going into something like this. They'll give to Wolf. He'll gain about seven. He'll bring up second and three. Let's now go down to the field. This will be joined by Karen Schulte. Karen? Thanks, guys. Down here on the field with ISU Athletic Director Bruce Vandevelde. A nice day for you guys to be hosting Northern over here. It sure is, Karen. We've got a great crowd, a wonderful day. It's family weekend and Hall of Fame weekend, so we're real excited about today. Now, I know you have a special halftime presentation going on here at the game today. We do. We're honoring our Hall of Fame recipients, the 2004 Hall of Fame class. We have 10 members going into the Iowa State University Hall of Fame. We had a wonderful dinner last night. And we're also recognizing our gold medal winner and All-American, Kale Sanderson. Must be proud to have him be, a, be an alum here of the school. Oh, we sure are. Kale's been not only a great athlete, but a great ambassador and role model for, for everyone. All right, Bruce, thanks so much. Thank you. ISU Athletic Director Bruce Vandebelli, and we'll be talking to Kale Sanderson at half. 20 to 7, Iowa State with the lead over Northern Illinois. And a big reception there by Brad Cieslek. Big tight end out of Long Grove, Illinois. It was about 257. Play action for Horvath. Over the middle. And it's incomplete. Had his man open. Boy, that side just had a long ways to look at that one. Wanted to find Marcus Perez. Just kind of underthrew him a little bit. Let's take a look at this one again. And you know, they had the play set up perfectly with the play action. A little bit short on the throw, Must though. Must have snuck through. And, uh, well, I don't know. That, that looks I pretty close. <laughs> that looks pretty close to a catch. Horvath this time will dump it off to his tight end. And look at Seaslock. Fancy footwork inside of the 20-yard line. My coach Joe, Joe Novak really likes his big tight end, doesn't he? Oh, boy, he sure does. I'll tell you what. You know, a play like that... Jeff, play like that's just kind of like having a, a, an extra running play. A high percentage throwing pass. Got it. I don't know why he went and moved the ball to his inside shoulder because he shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so he did, and he didn't fumble the ball, which is good, I guess. Yeah, he's, a, he's a big guy. He's been blocking a lot on running <laughs> plays, and now he gets a chance to lug the rock. Here's Wolf. Gains a couple. As... Iowa State stiffens up their defense. Right in the middle again, Brent Curvey and company in on the stop. How about that, Kale Sanderson coming on at halftime? Olympic champion, won a gold medal out of 185 kilograms. You know, he did lose, I think, once in his lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Not in college, he might have lost it when he was trying to make the Olympics. Here's Horvath to the end zone. Man's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown. Wow. Going up to get that pass for Northern Illinois was Sam Hurd. That sure looked like a uh, interception. Hey, you know, you're, you bring up the Sam Hurd. Here's a guy that Joe Novak benched last week for disciplinary reasons. Back this week, I asked, <laughs> I asked Coach about that. I said, what do you think about this? I said, your guys have got to have a lot of respect for you to sit there, potentially put a game on the line by getting rid of two of your starters and not playing them. He's like, I don't know if that's brilliance or stupidity. So <laughs> obviously the guy is, could be missing if he's not there. So Mendick adds the extra point. It's 2014 Iowa State. You're watching college football here on FSN. Now, there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA. This is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com.
on their 20. As Dyes Thompson filled the ball in the end zone about three yards deep. So the Cyclones will have it first and 10 out of their own side of the 50 at the 20-yard line, leading it by six with about six minutes to go here in the first half. An excellent throw from Horvath to Sam Hurd. And you know, here we go. That extra point that Iowa State missed on the opening score of the ball game, Gary, that could come back into play here in the second half. Somewhere along the line, something like that always does seem to come back and haunt you. Meyer looks to throw. Has a man. It's picked off. With the interception for Northern Illinois is Ray Smith. He had three interceptions last year. Gets his first pick this year. And Meyer threw it in traffic, but this ball was tipped. Oh, absolutely. It was tipped by his own guy. You got to catch that ball. He catches the ball. And there's no interception. So that's the first turnover of the year by Iowa State. And it comes on a deflected pass, and Ray Smith will put Northern Illinois in good field position. First and 10 at the Iowa State 25-yard line. Huskies are down by six. Tell you what, BJ, I'm really impressed with both these quarterbacks. Both young guys. This game seems to be moving pretty slow for them. They're sitting in there. They're holding it. They're throwing passes that are on the money, and the receivers are catching it. Sam, that hasn't happened in the past. Sam Hurd with the catch right there. The coverage made by, or tackle made by Ellis Hobbs. This is a timing route here, Gary, as we see Horvath trying to find Hurd. Well, he got just enough separation, didn't he? <laughs> Ran a little sideline route for a good pickup. First and ten now. For Nor Horvath still got it. He's still telegraphing those plays. Boy, I'll tell you, as a secondary guy, I'd be looking at his eyes from the get-go. Here's Harris. He'll gain a couple to the nine of Iowa State as Nick Mosier comes in to make the tackle for Iowa State. Wrapped up by number nine, Mosier for Iowa State. Looks like Matt Robertson. A little slow to get up for the Cyclones, but back up on his own feet. It'll bring up second down and eight at the nine. The Cyclone defense has been tested down here already this afternoon. They have, and they came up big in a fourth down stop. I'll tell you, you know, uh, Northern Illinois, they get in the red zone. They put points up, and uh, Iowa State's done a good job at keeping them out. Here's Harris weaving his way inside of the five. He'll score. And Northern Illinois has tied it up at 20 apiece. What a run by A.J. Harris. Here it is again. And after he breaks through the initial line, he does this one on his own. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what, you're not going to arm tackle this guy. This guy is a load. He's 6'1 he? and uh, 220 pounds. This guy's not going to come down by an arm tackle. You're going to have to put your hat on him and stop him. Nendick with the extra point, and the Huskies have the lead for the first time today. 21 20, 449 left to go here in the first half. Let's go down to Karen Schulte now, who's on the sideline. Karen. Well, I tell you what, Coach Joe Novak has to be pretty pleased with the way his Huskies are putting points up on the board. One of their concerns coming into this contest was being able to convert when they're in the red zone. Last weekend, when they were playing number one in Division I AA, Southern Illinois, they were in the red zone six times, and they came away with only six points on two field goals. So being able to score when they're close to the goal line, that was certainly a priority, and it looks like they're getting things taken care of. Yeah, Thanks a lot, Karen. 21-20 your score and that extra point that Iowa State missed at the beginning of the ball game. Huge factor right now is the Huskies have the lead. Otherwise, this one would be all tied up. You can't discount those special teams, can you? No, you cannot. I, you you kind of got to wonder what's going through Jansen's mind right now. You know, it, the bad part is a lot of these kickers, and you take it to it. That is very uh, is a very mental picture, and these kickers. They're all frail. You can't do anything to them. You know, you got to get out there, beat them up, rub them up a little bit. And then this mental thing can kind of go away a little bit. Well, Jansen, he showed some toughness coming back, hitting his next two extra points. Here's Tyese Thompson. He's pounded at the 20-yard line, and that's where Iowa State will take over offensively. 16-yard return for Iowa State. 444 to go in the first half. A one-point lead for the Huskies. Looks to be a little bit of frustration down there on the field. Scoring drive for Northern Illinois. Three plays, 25 yards. Just took a little over a minute to punch it in. And Harris with that nine-yard touchdown run. 
Brett Meyer will hang at quarterback for Iowa State. Look at the rushing yards. The difference, 75 to 27. You know, Iowa State was bound and determined to run the football this year, and especially in this game. They wanted to, to have a good game in that department. Meyer to the air. Comes back and fires this one wide of his intended target and John Davis. Falls incomplete intended for John Davis. Alva Hansbrough on the coverage for the Huskies. Covering for Northern Illinois, number nine, chicken by number 11, Hansbrough. So Brett Meyer now throws his first pick of his career. Iowa State coaching staff keeping him out there. And it's kind of when you like you're falling off your bike, you want to put him back right back on, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You gotta you gotta keep him out. You gotta give him confidence. Well, that's not so good right there. Oh, they called a forward pass though. Called it a forward pass, it goes incomplete. And it will bring up third and ten now for Iowa State. What do you think, Gary? Did, did he not take enough time to, yeah, he, to set up the play? You don't have a lot of time during that play right there at all, but you, you got to get the ball out there. you got to get it a good throw. This is something that uh, the quarterback needs to just needs a turn. The throw has to be there, and uh, he just made a bad throw. That's all. Third down conversions today. Iowa State, 2 of 5. Northern Illinois, 1 of 5. Third and long. Meyer... Misses his intended receiver incomplete as he wanted to find Moses. And it looks like, well, that was three and out for Iowa State. And looked like Brett was a little anxious on each throw. You know, I was talking with the Iowa State uh, uh, SID, Tom Grishel. And you know what? He, you know, last year he made a good point. He said, our offense was never on the field. Our defense was continually on the field. And you know what? The last, uh, what, last five minutes, seven minutes of the game, it's been all Iowa State uh, defense. And, that, and uh, that defense is going to get tired if they don't give them a break and the offense start putting some drives together. Dan Sheldon back to work. This time he's corralled by Robertson and company. Stevie Hicks also in on the tackle. Takes it to the 40-yard line, and that's where the Husky offense will be back to work again with a one-point advantage and well, all momentum's on the side, or side of Northern Illinois right now. Boy, you thought that, uh, I, 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 I truly thought Iowa State was getting it back, but, uh, you know, Northern Illinois has just, they, they keep doing what they have to do to stay in this game and to keep the momentum on their side. A lot of patience, too, for the Huskies. Horvath will give it off to Wolf. Brandon Brown will make the tackle for Iowa State. Brings up second and long. Coach Joe Novak, you know, you got to give him a lot of credit too. He's had a quarterback who's made some mistakes early on in the season, but he stuck with Bill Horvath because, well, frankly, he didn't have anybody else to go to right. because with Josh Haldy on the bench, but just a very patient guy. Here's Wolf again. And he's stacked up for little or no gain. A lot of Cardinal jerseys there as he ran across the line. You know, I was talking with, uh, I talked to Josh Hawley during walkthrough yesterday, and all he could say about Horvath was how smart this kid is. And I, I asked him, I said, well, as the game slowed down for him, he goes, it didn't against Maryland, I can guarantee you that. He said he came off of that, that first series, he didn't know what was hitting him. Big third down here for the sophomore quarterback out of Naperville. He'll look to throw. Pressure's on and he'll fumble it. But he pounces right on top of it. Boy, Tyson That's Smith was putting on the pressure from the outside. That was a, <laughs> this is a big break for Northern Illinois. That, uh, very lucky to get that ball back. Could have turned the tide. Here's the play again, and watch the pressure come in from the outside, and Horvath just fumbled it. Yeah, he had nobody, uh, <laughs> nobody blocking. There's one person you better put a man on, and that's Tyson Smith. Yeah. Gallagher on to punt again as the Huskies face a fourth and 15, as you see. Good punt. Driving Todd Miller all the way back to his 10-yard line. Good block, wow. Uh-oh, flag. 
Rod Miller takes it, and now we've got more hankies coming out. It's a regular handkerchief fest out there right now. Gosh. Tell you what, there's some uh, there's some tempers flared out there right now. And, uh, you know, there's probably no love lost between these two teams, I can guarantee you that. You know, Iowa State's got a bitter taste in their mouth from the loss last year at Northern Illinois. And Northern Illinois, they've got to be really chapped. I went 10-2, and and I didn't even get to go to a bowl game, and there's teams out there 7-5 going. Coach McCarney having a discussion. I don't think it's more of a discussion with DeAndre Jackson. It's more of a... More of a, you better get it together. <laughs> One of those. I, I am still the chief. <laughs> and now the uh, refs having a union meeting here. Steak, salad, or what do you think they're serving for <laughs> halftime with those guys? No. They've had to use their handkerchief a lot here in the first half. In fact, as far as for penalties here today, let's hear. There are three fouls on the play. Three, huh? During the return, number 15 on the return team. Illegal block in the back. That foul was penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. After the play was over, there are two dead ball fouls. A personal foul on the kicking team. A personal foul on the receiving team. Those penalties offset Iowa State football first down. Wow. Let's take a look at this one again and see where everything came into play here. Gary, can you count them up? Right here is one. Right there, 15. It looks like, uh, who is that? Yeah, it looks like 15 got that one, and there's some pushing right here. A little celebrating right there. Smacked him in the head. Who was that? Is Deon that DeAndre Jackson. Was that Jackson? Okay. Yeah, I mean, what do you think if you take a look at the scorecard there, a one-timer to the face, and then how, many, how do you score that in a boxing match? <laughs> Wasn't it, close it this, It doesn't though. count. You can punch all you want in those helmets. They don't hurt you. Six penalties in this game so far, and we're in the first half. Four well, against nine, Iowa State. Isn't that, that, that's yeah. like nine or ten now. Tip ball. As Meyer goes back to work again, it'll bring up second and ten. Cyclones with the ball at their own 12-yard line. Here it is as Meyer tries to put some air, but good bad down pass there for Northern Illinois as the defensive end was able to knock that one down. Yeah, that's the technique of a defensive lineman right there. Push, 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 push. You see that quarterback rearing back the throw? Get your hands up. Travis Moore with the deflection. Meyer, four of 11 here today. They give it to Hicks. And the sophomore out of Omaha doesn't have much room to run. Javon Lee with the tackle for Northern Illinois. Now time is called with by Northern Illinois with 156 to go here in the first or 154 to go in the first half. So they're thinking that they could get some good field position. Still got a couple of timeouts left to work with here in the first half to try to put more points up on the board. Oh, absolutely. You know, we were talking back before, as mentioned, in about Phil Horvath and what Haldy was having to say about him. And Haldy just, he couldn't talk enough about how brilliant this kid was. And yet, here's Haldy. You know, he's a 3.9 GPA guy. And listen to this, because I'm only going to say this once. He is nominated for the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame National Scholar Athlete Award. Wow. Is that a mouthful? you got to be smart just to say that. It certainly is. And, you know, on the other sideline, Iowa State has had their fair share of that award. I believe just a few years ago, Todd Bandauer, okay. former quarterback here, yep. received that award too. So a lot of smart guys quarterbacking at both of these schools over the years. Gary, you weren't a quarterback, were you? I was not a quarterback. <laughs> Never <laughs> wanted to get on East Center? Uh, no. They can, uh, they can keep that to the guys back there. I just wanted to hit the quarterback. Now for Iowa State, they're facing a third and nine here. Third and long situation. You're deep back inside of your own territory. Do you, I'm, I'm sure you don't want to be too risky, and that's what new offensive coordinator Barney Cotton's probably talking or talked over with his team right now is what sort of play do you run out of this situation? Do you play it safe or do you try to air it out a little bit? Well, I think you've got to air it out. You've you got to get that first down. Oh, and Brett Meyer is sacked. Coming up with a play for 
Northern Illinois. Coming in from the outside. Boy, they burned up another that timeout. that was Ken West. That was a, yeah. Wasn't that the blitz off the uh, corner over there? And Northern Illinois wants to get some field position here and get it rolling. That was a great defensive play. And so the Huskies have one timeout remaining with 1.46 to go here in the first half. And they have a one-point lead over Iowa State. I mean, this has been quite a ball game here up to this point. I mean, Iowa State getting out to the 20-7 to lead. Northern Illinois able to come back with 14 unanswered points right now, and they want to, and they're going to get the football back, and they're probably going to have pretty good field position, and they always have the very elusive, exciting Dan Sheldon returning those punts and a couple of future Iowa State cheerleaders in attendance here today. And the current Iowa State cheerleaders. You know, Barney Cotton, they say, is probably one of the biggest assets to the Iowa State football team right now. He came in. This is a great, this is what I love. I love a, a lineman as a coordinator, lineman coach as a coordinator. And uh, Barney Cotton's come in here. He's done a great job. This offensive line has, it has really improved over last year. They've gelled a lot more, probably had a lot more concentration on it. And in, in, in all honesty, I like that type of thing where I have a coordinator working with me. The coordinator gives you a little bit more of the big picture, so it helps broaden your understanding of how the whole entire offense works. Blankenship will have to punt it out of his own end zone. No pressure. Kicks it straight into the wind, and Sheldon will get it out of his own 45. This is a returnable punt. Sheldon lets the block and get up in front of him, but he'll be wrangled down by Baum at the 40-yard line, and well, he was shifting around just trying to find that open lane. He sure was. I, I'll tell you what, though. It, I don't know if this is planned or not, but it, he, he, he comes out, starts off to the left side. You see the wall starting to build up on the right. He comes back to the wall. He ends up getting, uh, he stays to the left. He's, he's, dead in, he's dead in the water. He came back to the right side and ended up making about 15 yards out of that. Boy, a walk on for Iowa State. Just made that tackle there. Ryan Baum, a 5'10", 190-pound sophomore out of nearby Gilbert. Huskies back out on offense, and they'll go out of the shotgun. Horvath trying to engineer a drive. Pressure's on. And he'll throw it away. And nobody near that pass, but they... Yeah, that's a smart play. Yep. Smart play. No use standing in there and getting killed. Get rid of the ball and be all right. Well, Iowa State has been able to put some pressure on the quarterback in Horvath today, though. Oh, yeah. Hey, it worked for Dan Marino for years. Yeah. <laughs> Just throwing that football away. <laughs> Live for another pass, right? That's right. Nine, most, most important play in football is the next play, so let's get going. 90 seconds to go. Horvath to the air again. Has an open man. And the catch will be made as they'll take it ahead for about a gain of nine on the play. I'll tell you what. I, I'll tell you what. I, I am very impressed with the way Horvath plays in this first half because he usually hasn't showed up last two weeks. He hasn't showed up to play the second half. He had a... Oh, here we go. We're going again. No huddle play, and Horvath gets the first down as he takes it himself ahead for a gain of a couple. Kind of caught, Quick caught Iowa State kind of back on their heels a little bit. Yeah, I'll tell you first what. Novak's coaching a good game today. They'll go with a no huddle again with no timeouts remaining for Northern Illinois. Inside of a minute now, Horvath to the air, has his man, Powers has it. Inside of the 20, he'll lean for the first down, and Ooh. looks like he'll get it. That'll stop the uh, clock inside of a minute. Looked like a pretty lucky spot for Northern there, because I, <laughs> I don't think he had the first down. I'll tell you what, here's the, one of the worst things that you can do as a, as a uh, defensive back, and that is the slip and fall. Ellis Hobbs on the tackle there. First and 10, Northern Illinois at the 16 of Iowa State. Horvath to the end zone, and no one's home. Just threw it away. Well, the clock continues to tick as it stopped right now at 49 seconds. And Horvath allowed to huddle up now as the clock is stopped. Horvath today, a lot better first half this week than last week. 10 of 15 for 134 yards. That's awesome. That's some great staff right there. 
Horvath again to the air, has his man open, touchdown! Cislak! Wow, the big guy got open right in the middle of the field, and he'll take it into the barn. Tell you what, this for, for Horvath, this has got to be a huge confidence builder. You know, they're not playing a slouch Iowa State team. This is a this is a good Iowa State football team. They're very sound defensively. They're very sound offensively. Uh, very evenly matched. They're just they've got the momentum. They're doing the right thing. Extra point is up and in. That was a good hole because that snap was not good. With 45 seconds to go in the first half, Northern Illinois shocking Iowa State with an eight-point lead. For a chance to win one of two. There's a happy Husky right there. Did you say happy or hot? A little of both, little I'm sure. <laughs> He's saying, come on, bring me some AC. Yeah, exactly. Indicated. Well, the sun has opened up, and so has the scoring for Northern Illinois. Now 21 unanswered points put on the board by the Huskies. I'll bet you, uh, I, I, I think Joe Novak's going to have nightmares about throwing the ball as much as he has been. But I'll tell you what, he's opened himself, he's opened himself a whole new era in games coming from here forward because people are now going to have to look at both. Not only a smash mouth running game, but he's opening it up out there in the passing game as well. 48 points put on the board by both of these two teams in the first half. I didn't expect this, did you? Oh, absolutely not. I thought this would be a, a, a lot tighter game, not quite as much scoring. I thought the defenses would really play hard, really shut down these offenses, and uh, it, it, it's just blowing wide open. Nendick will... A high short one, kick. Yeah. Tyus Thompson will take it at the seven. Has a seam as he busts out to the near the 30-yard line. Boy, he had it, but it closed down in a hurry. As Northern Illinois made the sure-handed open field tackle, and that's where the Iowa State offense will have it inside of 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's a look at it again, and ever so close. Again, Iowa State has had a few of these plays today, just close from breaking it wide open. Cyclones down by eight. The lineup out of the shotgun formation. They've got two timeouts remaining. Meyer to the air. Finds his receiver. Oh, there, there was the beast putting a hit on him. Ryan Atkinson with the tackle as Moses makes the catch for Iowa State. That was great concentration by that receiver because I'll tell you what, I, I think if I saw the beast pounding down on me, I, I might get alligator arms. Here's a throw to the sideline and unable to get out of bounds there is Mylon Moses. We're going to say the clock's going to continue to tick and Iowa State's going to have to burn a timeout. Boy, the redshirt freshman caught the ball on the sideline and Gary, I mean, the seconds are precious here at the end of the first half and Moses just could not get out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you what, he, he was concentrating more on catching that ball than he was trying to stay in bounds. So the Cyclones will take a timeout with seven seconds to go here in the first half. Again, the Huskies, you see, on the screen, 20, leading it by 8-28-20. Now, with seven seconds to go, or ten actually, they put three more seconds up on the board. With ten seconds to go in the first half, you've got the ball at the, your own 38-yard line. What type of play do you run? Uh, I think maybe you give it, yeah, it, it here would be my one thing. Do I give Jansen an opportunity to redeem himself, try to get down there at least close enough to get into the range, or do I take a shot at the end zone, maybe get, an, maybe, maybe get a couple shots at the end zone out of this if it doesn't work out? Well, Iowa State with one timeout remaining. Oh, they've got a timeout. I'm sorry. Might try Wasn't to get, paying that much attention to that. Might try to get it down the field, and sure. you're right, get, get, time it, out. get it to Jansen, but that's got to be a quick bang-bang play. And Boy, Northern Illinois, in pre-vent defense, you see three down linemen. As Meyer will be out of the shotgun. No pressure. Meyer steps up. He'll fire to the far side of the field. It goes incomplete. And we'll see how much time is left on the clock. I believe six seconds. That play only took four seconds to run for Iowa State. So they had that idea in mind there by trying to get it down the field, trying to get it within field goal range and bring Jansen on quickly. As Meyer went with the underneath man. He might have been more successful trying to run it himself right there. 
Six seconds to go in the half. Meyer will let it fly. And fly it does. And it'll be intercepted by Lionel Higginbottom. So Boogie gets the interception to end the first half of play. And Northern Illinois has a 28-20 lead on Iowa State. And boy, some resiliency put out there by Northern Illinois because, let's face it, their offense didn't look exactly sharp at the early part of the game. It looks fantastic at the end of the first half. Let's go down to Karen Schulte. It absolutely does look fantastic here. 21 points scored by the Huskies in the last seven minutes. Coach Joe Novak, your team got it together. Well, we did. We got a lot of football to play. The last thing we said in the locker room was going to be a 60-minute game, and I'm sure it's going to be. How concerned were you when you come out on your first possession and throw the ball to the Cyclones? Well, we got a young quarterback, and he's making some mistakes, and he's making some plays, so you live with that. And your defense seems to be kind of honing in a little bit on their quarterbacks as well now. I think we're playing pretty well right now, but there's a lot to play yet. How do you keep that momentum going? <laughs> Try to win, that's it. <laughs> All right, very good. Coach Joe Novak joining us here on the sidelines. Thank you very much, Karen. Again, your halftime score. Iowa State down to Northern Illinois, 28-20. We'll have more coming up in a moment. We're at the half. You're watching college football here on FSN. This is Fuel TV, the network dedicated to the world of action sports. Featuring skateboarding, surfing, BMX, freestyle moto, snowboarding, and wakeboarding. Oh, I wanna go. Only on Fuel TV can you experience the energy and danger that define action sports. Fuel TV, Action Sports Television. Meet Bob. Bob went to Arizona. His friend went to Nebraska. And their other friend, Florida State. Now they all live together in L.A. So how do they follow their favorite college teams? With Fox College Sports, featuring over 800 NCAA games each year on three regionally aligned channels. FCS Pacific, FCS Central, and FCS Atlantic. All the games that matter in one powerful package. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Fox College Sports, where college never ends. Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at FoxMovieChannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries and behind-the-scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film-loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th Century Fox Movies. FoxMovieChannel.com NFL Sunday returns this September. The best damn sports show, period. Join the guys for the most outrageous late night sports show television's ever seen. Weeknights on FSN. 28-20 Northern Illinois with a lead over Iowa State here at the half. Let's take a look at the first half statistics here. And Gary, what really jumps out at you uh, with this game right now when, as you see the, the stat page here? Well, I, the number one thing is the n amount of rushing yards Northern Illinois has been putting on this Iowa State defense, number one. 
Second thing is time of possession. Uh, with Northern Illinois sitting there with uh, almost 18 minutes and versus 12 versus uh, Iowa State. So I think those are the two big statistics right here. And of course, Brett Meyer, he started four of six passing for 121 yards with two scores. He then went two for nine with eight yards and two interceptions. Let's take a look at some first half highlights here. And there were a lot of them. Edgewood Bigger with 48 points on the board and it all starts right here with Nick Mosier. Then Iowa State puts the second score on the board with Todd Blythe catching his first touchdown pass of the day. Meyer again to Blythe on a long play. Blythe with his second score of the afternoon. Now for Northern Illinois, here's some big highlights. And this is a, they ran this play twice and they're able to get it in on the second time. And then Horvath to the air, he finds Sam Hurd. And this is where the Huskies really started to stamp it on as A.J. Harris powers his way into the end zone. Then Horvath again finds his big tight end, C-Slack, for the score. And that's what puts us at 28-20 here at intermission at Jack Trice Stadium. A lovely day here for college football. And let's take a look at the quarterback comparison. You see Horvath, 11 of 16 for 150 yards. He's really been efficient today. The two touchdowns, he did throw the interception that was returned for a score. And then, of course, Brent Meyer, two touchdowns and two picks. Iowa State will get the football to begin the second half. And Ellis Hobbs will take it up to about the 20-yard line. And that's where the Cyclone offense will start on downs there. Tell you what, BJ, right there, the, uh, you, another thing out there, you see the turnovers. Iowa State hasn't turned the ball over at all this year, twice today already in the first half. One was kind of one of those interceptions, though, that you think right. it shouldn't really count, but it does because it's the way it was it in the active play. That's just the way it is. It's one of those unfair stats, right? John David and Miker, and 28-20, Iowa State's offense out of the field, and Brent Meyer will start the second half here for the Cyclones. The lineup out of the shotgun formation. They've really used this set a lot here this afternoon. Two in the backfield, and Meyer will run the option. He'll keep it himself. And the quarterback will stay on his feet. Good gain up to about the 39-yard line as it was ushered out of bounds by Lionel Hickabottom. Here's a look at it, Gary. The same play that they ran earlier in the day, but just miscommunicated on. and Would have been for a big gain there, but Meyer... Did a good job keeping it himself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the, the defensive guy, he's got to get off the block. He's been he's being blocked right here. Can't get off the block. He needs to get off there. Everybody else was in the right position. They just got to get off the block so you can force the play and make it, and get it done. Now Iowa State back to the I formation. First and 10 at the 39. Here's Meyer. Finds his man and the catch is made. Inside of the Husky 50, Todd Blythe with the reception. I'll tell you what, this is what Iowa State needed to do. Come out here, get the ball moving, get a little bit of the momentum going back on their side, and they're getting it done. Gary, how about this matchup as we see it here on the screen with Todd Blythe going up against Adriel Hansbro. I mean, Hansbro's giving up almost a foot on Todd Blythe. I mean, yeah. Todd's a very... Tall drink of water out there for Iowa State. You know what? And Iowa State needs to start putting that to their advantage. Obviously, there's a significant mismatch on that. Iowa State needs to take advantage of that. Here's Steve Hicks. He'll pound his way down near the 45-yard line. It'll bring up second and long. A tackle made by Jason Hawkins, and he's kind of been all over the place today for Northern Illinois. Well, what, what do you think the adjustments were made by each team? Uh, when they were in the locker room? Well, I'll tell you what, I, in Northern Illinois, I, I, truly I believe that there probably wasn't much as far as adjustments go. I think the coach went in there and said, hey, keep doing what you're doing, persistent, keep getting after it, let's keep giving the effort. We're doing a good job. All we need to do is keep doing what we're doing. I think on the Iowa State ball, I think McCartney went in there and said, hey, guys, calm down, relax. We're doing the things we need to do. We need, to, we need to tweak some things here and there. We're getting a lot. I think you guys are just tight. Relax, and let's play football. We're a good team. We can come out, we can come back, and we can get it done. Iowa State, you know, has faced adversity before last week against Iowa in a very close football game. Now Brent Meyer just fumbled the exchange from center there, but you know, they have been put in a situation like that before. Now down by eight, the end of the second half, and facing a third and long here. I'll tell you the one thing I'm impressed with is the fact that Meyer and Flynn 
haven't, this, I, as far as I know, this is the first drop snap from center they've had, and that is a difficult thing to do. Probably the most difficult thing about having two quarterbacks is that center quarterback extreme. Terrence Highsmith on the reception from Meyer. He'll take it to the 40-yard line. He'll be held shy of the first down by about three yards. Let's see what Iowa State will do here on fourth down. Looks like Todd Blankenship, or excuse me, Troy Blankenship will come on to punt for Iowa State. Fourth and two, Cyclones will punt it. Field position big here in this one. And here's the punt, and he'll drive it right near the goal line, and Baum will get right on top of it at the two. Maybe the one. Boy, great coverage by Ryan Baum and a good punt by Blankenship. <laughs> and that, you don't get any better than that. It looked kind of awkward like it was going to go right into the end zone, but... Boy, just had enough spin on it, knocked it dead inside of the five-yard line at the two. Iowa State wants to take control of this game. They need to do something right here. Huskies will bring it out of their own end zone. Horvath underneath center. He'll give it off to his running back, and he'll maybe get to the one. Brandon Brown and company in on the play. There is a penalty flag down. It's a hold against Northern Illinois, not what they wanted. Be interesting to see what Iowa State will do here. As they dropped him for a yard loss anyway. And I don't know if I take the penalty. Holding no. on the offense, number 68. The penalty is behind. Second, exactly. second down. Watch the right guard here on your screen going against Nick Leaders. Why is that a hold, Gary? <laughs> the takedown more than anything. Here's Horvath. Has his man, and Sheldon, did he make the catch? Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. He wow, a big play there from Horvath to Sheldon. Attempted a pass to number five. Iowa State has had great coverage on Dan Sheldon here today. I think Northern Illinois is surprising themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they realized that they could pass the ball the way they could. And we mentioned Horvath really a second-half quarterback. He is, absolutely. I mean, this is only his second official start. This time a run out of the play action. Has his tight end open. And it's another first down as a good gain on the play for Northern Illinois. You see that play right there, B.J.? They designed it similar to the one play that the uh, tight end came out and ended up almost, I think it was a play that he scored on coming around to the sideline. Faked that, brought another guy across down through the middle and hit, it deep, hit the deep guy instead of the short guy. Iowa State covered it extremely well if it would have been the, the original play. Well, Northern Illinois really doing a good job digging themselves out of a big hole. They had it first and 10 from their own two. Now they've got it at the Iowa State 33. They'll give it to the tailback, and A.J. Harris will take it up beyond the 45-yard line, up to about the 46. Harris on the tackle for Iowa State. Hey, Iowa State needs to get some excitement back in their play, boy. They're just, they're just, they seem lethargic right now. They just, I think... I sure hope they can get that excitement back. And, and, and if anybody can get it back, you know, Dan McCartney can get it done. A.J. Harris, the lone tailback. First and 10 with the ball at the 46 of Northern Illinois. They'll keep it on the ground. Tyson Smith will track down Harris after a gain of a couple. Tyson Smith, number one, wraps him up after a short. Well, Northern Illinois has really just wanted to keep pounding it at Iowa State. That's really opened up their passing game, hasn't it? Oh, it certainly has. There's no question about it. I'll tell you what, that right there, Tyson Smith, you know, you talk about a guy that has closing speed. <laughs> for a lineman, he's got closing speed on these guys. Second and eight for Northern Illinois. They'll give it again to Harris. And he'll be crunched down by Mosier and company. In fact, <laughs> Robertson lost his helmet on the play. Nine, Boy, there's some hard hitting going on down on the Boy, field. you can hear that cracking clear up here in the booth. 
Big third down here on this drive for Northern Illinois. Third and six right at the midfield stripe. Cyclone defense asking for their fans to get into it. And there's movement on the offensive line for Northern Illinois. The left tackle moves, so that'll push him back five yards. I think Tyson Smith's in his mind a little bit right there. <laughs> Number 62 on the offense. Looked like he was trying to get adjusted there, thinking, oh boy, Tyson Smith's got a wide stance on me here. I need to get... Uh, he gets something adjusted here so I can make sure I can get back and he doesn't beat me on the corner. And that infraction was against Doug Free, a 6'6", 290-pound sophomore. And we mentioned that was going to be the highlight matchup because he's got two great athletes. You rarely say that it's not an offensive lineman a whole lot, but Doug Free is certainly that. Came into Northern Illinois as a tight end, moved to tackle last year as a true freshman. Now he's lined up against one of the best of the Big 12. Horvath to the air. And a penalty flag will come down. Iowa State missed an opportunity for an interception right there. Sam Hurd was the intended target, but he was tripped up by DeAndre Jackson. And the question might be, would that be catchable or not? But he tripped him up when that ball was just floating down the sideline. And it is pass interference against Iowa State. Here to, here's that play again. That's Up in the corners where you see the trip. On the defense, number 14. The foul is penalized 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Wow, and that's a that's a killer for Iowa State because it was third and long for Northern Illinois. Well, the time of possession was way in the favor of the Huskies in the first half. At over 18 minutes, and here in the second half, they're engineering a long drive. This drive started from their own two-yard line. Now have it at the Iowa State 40, first and 10. Yeah, the Iowa State offense has got to get some time. They've got to start giving that defense a break. It's, it, it, the day's getting to wear on. It's going to be a little bit warmer out there. It's hot. These guys these guys need a break. They need a, they need some time. This offense is the only thing that they got to keep them from being on the field. Harris will keep it on the ground. He'll gain a couple. Here's the difference, too. Penalties today. Six for 48 yards. And three for 19 for Northern Illinois. And I know that six penalties can't make Coach Dan McCarney very happy because his team is normally a well-disciplined team. Same can be said for Northern Illinois. Play action pass, Horvath. Finds Sheldon. He'll have the first down as he takes it inside of the 30 to the 27. That's the same play other side of the field there, B.J. Northern Illinois is manufacturing a drive right here. Dan Sheldon had his headgear taken off. <laughs> Seen that a lot today. <laughs> it's it's kind of nice to get that knocked off once in a while, kind of let you get a chance to cool your head down a little bit. They gave him the 26. It'll be first and 10 there. Lone tailback again is Harris. They'll give it to him. And the Big running back will take it inside of the 20 down to about the 18-yard line. Steve Paris on the stop for Iowa State. What big gain of nearly eight yards for the replacement to Michael the Burner Turner. And they say A.J. Harris is actually a little bit bigger and a little bit faster. His 40 time is right at 4.3. That's wow. moving. That's a smoker. Two tight ends set again for Northern Illinois. He'll give it to Harris on second and three. He'll have the first down as he'll work his way inside of the 15-yard line down to the 11. And it's just smash-mouth football right now for the Huskies. Yeah, you got to realize this, too. A.J. Harris had some big shoes to fill, leaving uh, Michael the Burner Turner taking him on last year. So, and where, I, where's he at? Ended up in San Diego. San Diego. Is he on his active, active roster? Like Northern Illinois with a lot of great running backs, including LaShawn Johnson before that. And now A.J. Harris trying to add to that legacy for the Husky. Here's a give to Harris again. He'll take it inside of the 10 and down near the 8-yard line before he's finally tripped up. Sean Moorhead and also Nick Mosier on the tackle for Iowa State. Number 9, Nick Mosier. 
I'll tell you what, BJ, yesterday, having an opportunity to go to the walkthrough at Northern Illinois, you know, it was lightning out here, a little some storms coming around. So uh, Iowa State let these guys come up here and go into the new practice, indoor practice facility. And, uh, you know, I, I know they were thinking what I was thinking because I was thinking, man, I wish I had an opportunity to have a facility like this and I was out there. And so I, I asked Joe Novak, I said, uh, and a touchdown. Touchdown for Northern Illinois. Chatone Powers on the receiving end of this one, and the Huskies have opened up a 14-point lead on Iowa State with 7.04 to go in the third quarter. A lot of time here in the pocket for Phil Horvath. Boy, just got behind the defense, didn't he? Yes, back, yeah. He's... And how about Phil Horvath? Maybe there's a quarterback controversy brewing in DeKalb. And the extra point is blocked. DeAndre Jackson will pick it up for Iowa State, and he can return this, but wrangled down right at the 13-yard line. So we might see another factor right there. It's just a 14-point lead, maybe a momentum swing for Iowa State. Very possibly, Kevin. This is great. 14-point lead for the Huskies. 7.05 to go here in the third quarter. You're watching college football here on FSN. Now there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports, the new network that brings you nearly 150 games from conferences like the Pac-10, Big 12, and more, plus local coaches shows and news from around the country. This is the network college football fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for Daredevils as they enter the Globe of Death. Inside that cage, four men who will risk their lives. Round and round they go, yes, where they'll stop, only their courage knows. Four men working as one. This is the dictionary definition of... Fox NFL Sunday returns this September... A hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. Is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise manifest. I'm Eddie Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. I'm number one who got stabbed. Nobody knows who stabbed who, and we can't get the cops hit. The door won't open. Northern Illinois has ripped off 27 unanswered points. They have a 14-point lead with 7.05 to go here in the third quarter. Coach Novak's got to like what he's seeing out there on the field right now for his Huskies. As we're in the play, deep back to receive. Thais Thompson, he'll take it at his five. Get to the 15, and they'll be wrangled down right at the 17-yard line. Those guys need to strap their helmets up, man. I don't know why they like them things coming off in a pile. Northern Illinois just scored on a 13-play drive that covered 98 yards. They lead it 34-20 to over Iowa State. You're watching college football here on FSN. Next week on an all-new Rescue Me. TV Guide raves. It's must-see TV. Hilarious, wrenching, and raw. Don't smoke it in the truck. That's gonna work. Powerfully entertaining. Chief, I need to develop him now! Tommy! And hot as a four-alarm fire. One of the best shows yet from cable's most daring network. <laughs> I'm a fireman, man. Come on. Rescue Me. All-new next week. Only on FX. Check local listings. The best damn sports show period, weeknights on FSN. Now there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports, the network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA, this is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. This month on Fox Movie Channel, Making a Scene takes you on the set of two hot new series. See how an episode is made from script to screen. 
First, you're on location with FX's critically acclaimed Over There. We're telling the story that I think a lot of people are afraid to tell. Then go behind the scenes and behind the bars of the Fox drama Prison Break. That's not a set. Guys died in that chair. It's your ticket to the creative process from start to finish. Making a scene, only on Fox Movie Channel. Due to time constraints, we will move ahead in our coverage following this commercial break on Fox College Sports. X marks a daring pursuit of the unknown. Unpredictable. Unforgettable. X marks questions that need to be explored. Stories that need to be told. X marks the destination for adventures so gripping you never let go. X marks Explorer. Sundays. Only on the National Geographic Channel. Dare to explore. The best damn sports show, period. Join the guys for the most outrageous late night sports show television's ever seen. Weeknights on FSN. 34 20 Northern Illinois out in front of Iowa State with 2.46 to go here in the third quarter. Huskies back with the football at their own 21. Horvath will give it to Wolf and he's tripped up right away. Lamarcus Hicks in on the tackle for Iowa State. That's a way down down there, BJ. Take a look at the rushing yards here today. That's Brandon Brown that's slow to get up off the field. Northern Illinois with 109 yards on the ground. Iowa State just 54. It, it's been an aerial assault here today for these two teams. <laughs> that is exactly what both these teams did not want to do. Sometimes the assault has been more vicious than others. Wolf will try to stretch out the Iowa State defense, and the Cyclones having none of it as Sean Warhead turns back Wolf. Is it me or Northern Iowa kind of taking a back seat here? Because they, they are looking flat. And I'll tell you what, they keep this up too much longer. That's momentum, Iowa State. These fans are going to get behind them. This game may turn around. Still a lot of time left. 14-point lead for the Huskies. Right now facing a long third down. Third and 17, they call it. With the ball at the fourth, their own 14-yard line. Cyclones slow to set up. Horvath will play it safe, gives it to Wolf, and he is crunched. Brett Kerbe on the tackle for Iowa State, and that's got the crowd juiced up. Take a look at this stat. Iowa State has 25 tackles for loss this season. Only recorded 66 in 11 games last year, so they're well on pace to break that, Gary. Oh, there's no question about it. You know, this defense is, is this is the defense that's been playing the last two weeks. And why it took them two, almost, yeah, it almost take three quarters to show up. Fourth and 20, Northern Illinois. Wow. Put it on their own end zone. It's blocked and recovered in the end zone by Lamarcus Hicks. And it's a touchdown, Iowa State. Ellis Hobbs, the one that blocked it. And Gallagher slow to get up. And the Cyclones are getting a kick started here in the third quarter let's look at this act again boy he came right up the pipe too ellis hobbs with the block hey not only did you get the ball you get to take the punter out it's a bonus and lamarcus hicks with the recovery put six on the board for iowa state and it's 34 26 a key extra point here we've had two misses today one for each team and the extra point is no good, no good wide no. left. Well, the last block punt for a touchdown for Iowa State came against Troy State back in the year 2002, but Iowa State unable to capitalize. Jansen pushed the extra point to his right. Might have hit the post. Wow. Uh, Just right. Boy, yes. And the fans can't believe it. Wow. That keeps them 18 out. 34-26 year score, and that is almost seen as a momentum killer. Oh, absolutely. I mean, come on, that puts them within a touchdown. Now they've got to do a touchdown and a safety, or a touchdown and a two-point conversion, or a touchdown 
you, know, you can't count the extra point because that's not going to be a gimme today. And then potentially going and getting the ball and coming back for another field goal at least. And that's not a gimme today. So I was, and Dan McCarney can't believe it. He's got to be frustrated with the kicking game at this point. Supposedly, Yelk is able to come back, except mentally, he's, he's wiped out. Or physically, one of the two yeah. with his hip, and then he was the starting kicker, and it could be either way. Hansen will put his foot into the ball. This time, it's going to be caught by Wolf at his own 17. A run to the near side of the field as he try to cut the corner. And he'll be ushered out of bounds. Out at about the 32, as DeAndre Jackson was there to greet him. The flag down there, too, he did. See what this is about, and it's Coach Joe Novak has seen his fair share of hankies thrown on the field today, more to his liking, especially for Iowa State, and it's, this penalty goes against Northern Illinois. During the return, illegal block in the back by the return team. Number 20, foul is penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. I don't even think that was First even, down. I don't even think that was close to the play. No. That was clear on the other side of the field from where the ball was being run. So now the Iowa State defense being asked to step up again and get a stop. They need a couple now. Down by eight. I'll tell you what, this Iowa State defense is the only thing that's keeping Iowa State in the game today. Horvath goes underneath center. From their own 15-yard line, they'll start the drive. They give to Harris. And the big tailback will rumble his way up near the 20-yard line. Henry Poulard makes the tackle. Pulled down by number 20, Henry Poulard for Iowa State. So 25 seconds to go, inside of 25 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And Northern Illinois going to be very patient to get this playoff as the play clock is not even on. Don't even need to run a play here. See what they do. Horvath will take the snap. They'll give it to Harris. And he'll be tackled out beyond the 20-yard line. Gains a couple, but it'll bring up third down. Let's go down to Karen Schulte now. Who's actually, we're going to take a break. When we come back, then we'll come back and talk with Karen Schulte, who's on the sideline. We're through three quarters of play. Huskies lead at 34-26. You're watching college football here on FSN. Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at FoxMovieChannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries, and behind-the-scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film-loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th century Fox movies. FoxMovieChannel.com NFL Sunday returns this September. We're being ravaged by a far greater epidemic than AIDS. Fear. Apathy. Denial. Ignorance. Thing is, you can help prevent the 40,000 new cases estimated this year. All you have to do is get tested, wear a condom, talk to your friends, wear the ribbon, donate your time, do something. How did I join the fight? By performing in a play about the disease. By educating others. I'm doing it right now. Join the fight.
34-26, Northern Illinois out in front with Gary Howe. B.J. Shaven along with you here this afternoon at Jack Trice Stadium. Huskies with the football, facing a third down. They'll run the football with Harris. He'll cross to the 25, and he'll get the first down. Let's take a look at the kicking problems today for Iowa State and Northern Illinois. Wow. Gary, that's action coming right at you. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, you know, I think each one of these coaches got to be sickened by the special team. I mean, there's been some great special team play today, and there's been some horrific special teams play today. Harris twisted down, and there's a penalty flag down thrown right at the spot of the tackle as Matt Robertson wrangled him down. See what this one's about as the officials confer. And it's a face mask penalty against Iowa State. Not what the Cyclone defense wanted. During the run, personal foul, illegally grasping and pulling on the face mask. 15 yard penalty against the defense. First down. You see those Iowa State guys, they're not together out there. You know what I mean? Look at them, they're kind of sporadic all over there. They're not really not together getting a call. They're just kind of. You know, they, they, like, they, they still got a chance. Yeah. Come on. Like they're in units right now. 14-28 to go in the game. Northern Illinois up by eight, trying to manufacture a time-consuming drive here. Four bath underneath center. They give to Harris. And he'll squirm his way out <laughs> beyond the 45 up to the 48. Speaking of kicking, let's get down to the sideline now and be joined by Karen Schulte. Karen? Yeah, you guys alluded to the fact that the Iowa State kicking game is struggling, and you also alluded to the fact that Coach McCarty not real happy. I can attest to that. I'm over here on the so Cyclone uh, sideline. And I tell you what, it looks like Mac may be making some changes with his kicking game. Number 26 freshman Scott Cravel was warming up here. He has his helmet on. He looks to be focused, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be going in. Brian Jansen has since taken off his helmet, and he seems to be pretty frustrated once again. Second down, six yards to go. They give to Harris. Penalty flag down on the field thrown on that far sideline as Harris got the carry. This one could be coming back against Northern Illinois. Well, you know, you, this is, that's not a bad move on Max's part. You know, yeah. he, somebody, it, it, nobody's going to get it done. Why not give somebody an opportunity? If I got a freshman out there that I can give an opportunity to, and I can use him for four years, that's a great move on my part. I think that's what they were thinking with uh, Jansen at the beginning of the season, and especially now. But it's been a kicking woeful game for, for both of these two Illegal teams. Illegal procedure on the offense. Only six players on a line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the previous match. Repeat second down. We thought it would be a dogfight. We're certainly getting that here this afternoon. Penalty, penalties in this quarter alone, each team does have one. Iowa State with that big 15 yard personal foul. Those, you know, there's some penalties out there that you can't help, that you can't. Those penalties like that are unacceptable. Here's, totally. here's a pass and it's going to be hauled in and Perez will take it beyond the 50 yard line finally pushed out of bounce boy that was an awkward looking play boy, especially I the what, reception I tell you what Horvath stuck in her boy he was wrapped up going down when he made that throw and and a great great catch he basically just ripped it out of the hands of the defender I mean there was a potential another pick right there here it again is again as Moorhead put the pressure on I mean look at the uh, uh, Wrap him up. Put the hurt on him. Make, you got to punish these guys. Third down and two yards to go for Northern Illinois. At the 48-yard line of Iowa State. Cyclones show blitz, and Harris will run right into it. Robertson makes the tackle for the Cyclones. I'll tell you what, that's got to be... That's one of the... Uh, you could definitely tell there's a... Uh, young quarterback out there because he didn't read that blitz he should have been able to audible that call off and get something going as opposed to try to run right into it and now gallagher will be on to punt again his last one block see how the protection is for northern illinois here see if Mackey 
coming after this one too? It looks like they're going to play it safe. Miller will take it out of his own 15. And he'll get up to the 27-yard line. That's where Iowa State's offense will take over with 12-21 to go here in the game, down by eight. That was an excellent punt. You see that right over the corner, right inside the 10-yard line. I'll tell you what, that was an awesome return from such a great punt. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. Is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise, not a test. I'm Eddie Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. I'm number one got stabbed. Nobody knows who stabbed who, and we can't get the cockpit. The door won't open. Meet Bob. Bob went to Arizona, his friend went to Nebraska, and their other friend, Florida State. Now they all live together in L.A. So how do they follow their favorite college teams? With Fox College Sports, featuring over 800 NCAA games each year on three regionally aligned channels, FCS Pacific, FCS Central, and FCS Atlantic. All the games that matter in one powerful package. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Fox College Sports, where college never ends. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for Daredevils as they enter the Globe of Death. Inside that cage, four men who will risk their lives. Round and round they go, yes, where they'll stop only their courage knows. Four men working as one. This is the dictionary definition of... Fox NFL Sunday returns this September. Iowa State will switch quarterbacks as they start this drive from their own 26-yard line, down by eight. Actually, Austin Flynn will remain in there, three of eight so far on the afternoon for 41 yards. Cyclones will run out of the eye. That's Cook in at pullback. They'll give to Tyus Thompson. He'll gain some positive yardage out beyond the 30-yard line. Well, Gary, for Iowa State, they really need to sustain a drive here, don't they? Oh, they do. They haven't done anything all day. They need to get down there and score. They need to get something going their way. Northern Illinois still, you know, there's really no momentum going here. Everybody, each team seems to be kind of flat. Somebody needs to do something to get something going. And, and whoever does it, the other one's going it, to have to crank it up. So I think you're going to see a lot. I think, I think sooner or later here, you guys see something happen. Flynn's pass deflected away. He might have taken a late hit as a flag is thrown in the backfield. I'm sure Flynn's sitting there saying, hey, it's about time that somebody called this on this guy. <laughs> He's taken his fair share of shots, and it is roughing the passer called against Northern Illinois. Travis Moore will be the guilty party. Roughing the passer on the defense, number 56. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Boy, Novak was not happy about that at all. He, he was stomping on the sideline. Okay, the ball's away, and oh, then the hit. That's, that's horrible. Well, being an old defensive lineman, did you ever get on one of those? Yeah, well. Huh? Did you ever get on one of those on the quarterback? Yeah, you know, it, it's so hard. You're working so hard to try to get to that quarterback and get to that quarterback. You know, you... When you get there, you get close like that, and you want to hit it. You just can't. You can't do that stuff. You, right now, you, you're flat. You know, Iowa State's starting to pick up a little bit of momentum. They've actually been playing better than Northern Illinois in the second half. And you got to get it. You, you, you can't make those errors and those penalties and, and think that you're going to stay in this game and be victorious. You're only up by eight. You haven't won this game yet. Iowa State really mixing it up offensively, going back to the run that time with Stevie Hicks. Brings up a second and five on the Husky side of the 50. Flynn runs the option, and he'll keep it himself. That looked ugly. <laughs> that, that wasn't a pretty play, but, uh, you know, he, I think he made the right decision as opposed to taking to get the ball out there. I think it was a good call. Well, it'll bring up third down for Iowa State and four to go. You know, Austin took him down to the 21 last time on the, the last possession for Iowa State and just had a couple of key drops. What do you think Mac's trying to say here? 
You making a point, but keeping Flynn in for three series in a row? Well, I think they're going with who's ever hot, maybe. Okay. How can you tell if the other guy's hot or not, though, BJ? <laughs> They moved the football a little bit. And now yeah. we've got a timeout. The, guy the other guy's standing over there on the sideline. You can't tell if he's hot or not. Iowa State will take the timeout with 10.26 to go, or 10.25 to go, here in the game. Again, an eight-point lead, and Barney Cotton has the attention of his offense as he's trying to come up with a play here. And a big third down for Iowa State. There's still a lot of time to be play, or a lot of time left in this football game. And you see the quarterback comparison here, Gary, as we're, we're alluding to it just a moment ago. Meyer, 8 of 17 on the day with 149 yards, and Flynn, 3 of 8 for 41. But the two touchdowns, two interceptions for Meyer. One of those interceptions was coming at the end of the first half when he threw it kind of a Hail Mary down the field. But uh, the other one was right into coverage. And, Iowa State fans hanging strong, wanting to see their team bounce back. Rushing yards, well, not what either team really wanted to do. They both really wanted to run the football. Well, yeah, they did. They both wanted to run the football. Northern, or Northern Illinois has been successful at it, and they were in a position where they thinking, heck, I might have to pass the ball more than I can run the ball. Iowa State, at least they've been determined to try to run the ball, and they've stuck with their game plan. They're still in the game. There's still potential for things to happen there. But uh, I'll tell you what, it, it's, this, this game has got to be aggravating right now for both of these teams. They just, uh, it, just, it just seems like the wind has been knocked out of both of them, and just nobody's being able to do anything right now. Shotgun formation for Iowa State on third and four. Going to put it in the air. Flynn. Has his man. What a catch. Todd Miller on the reception. That's a short guy getting up, Gary. Yeah, he, that was a great catch. Good concentration hanging on to the ball on the side. He's getting his head knocked off. Where's Boy, he went. <laughs> Boy, Ray Smith yeah. on the coverage there for Northern Illinois. Don Miller, as many hard hits as he's taken, or shots he's taken. Oh, I didn't think he was coming back out. He's back out there on the field again. Yep, pretty smart in the classroom. A two-time academic All-Big 12 selection. First and 10 for Iowa State. They'll give it to Hicks. A lot of running room. Hicks inside of the 10. And gets it down to near the one-yard line. Ushering him out of bounds, Ray Smith. Well, I tell you what, he read that. He's got some great vision to be able to see that. He, he cut that at the right time, got it out to the outside, got it down there inside the two-yard line. Boy, great open field running by Hicks here. Trying to bounce away from traffic and... Look at that hole. Huh. Now, I could have ran through that hole, BJ. I saw, it from the, <laughs> I saw it from the right angle, the angle I'm used to seeing. I could see that. I knew I could run through there. Hicks has 59 yards on the ground today. First and goal to go for Iowa State at the two-yard line. Hicks will try to take it. He goes nowhere. That was a great defensive stop by Northern Illinois right there. Lionel Higginbottom with the tackle. I'll tell you, back down, when you're back down as a defensive lineman and you're sitting there and you get something like this, it's like, it's like a relief. It's like, man, the pressure is now off. Anything anybody can get two yards. You get it backed up to the four yard line, you're sort of thinking, you know, we've done something big here. It'll bring up second and goal to go from the four yard line. Iowa State out of the I formation. They'll run the option. Glenn will keep it himself. Pater for Austin Flynn. Now, Gary, will they go for two? Got a lot of time left. You got a here. lot of time left. I don't think you need to do that right now. Well, you're uncertain about your kicker. Yeah. They had Crave a warming they just up. As well. It looks like they're going to go for two. 34 32, 908 left to go in the game. And 
Iowa State will line up out of the I formation, a two tight end set. Is there an option again here, BJ? What do you think? They'll go with the play action pass. Flynn fires the end zone. Got it! They find the tight end in the end zone. James Wright will haul it in. And we're tied up at 34. Iowa State answers back. They score 14. Tied up at 34. This month on Fox Movie Channel, Making a Scene takes you on the set of two hot new series. See how an episode is made from script to screen. First, you're on location with FX's critically acclaimed Over There. We're telling a story that I think a lot of people are afraid to tell. Then go behind the scenes and behind the bars of the Fox drama Prison Break. That's not a set. Guys died in that chair. It's your ticket to the creative process from start to finish. Making a Scene, only on Fox Movie Channel. The best damn sports show period, weeknights on FSN. Now, there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The new network that brings you nearly 150 games from conferences like the Pac-10, Big 12, and more. Plus, local coaches shows and news from around the country. This is the network college football fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Next week, on an all-new Rescue Me, TV Guide raves. It's must-see TV. Hilarious, wrenching, and raw. Don't smoke it in the truck. That's going to work. Powerfully entertaining. Chief, I need to develop him now! Tommy! And hot as a four-alarm fire. One of the best shows yet from cable's most daring network. <laughs> I'm a fireman, man. Come on. Rescue Me, all new next week, only on FX. Check local listings. The momentum of this game has really changed hands a couple of times. 34-34, here's a look at that two-point conversion. Look at James Wright begging for the football. <laughs> yeah, he's back there waving at it. Hey, throw it to me, throw it to me. And the kickoff for Iowa State. It'll be taken a yard deep by Wolf. We'll bring it up beyond the 15-yard line up to about the 17. Let's go to Karen Schulte. Karen, some well, things have changed, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. If there was ever a doubt, if Iowa State wanted to be in this game, there's no doubt now I'm back over here on the Cyclone sideline. And I tell you what, that enthusiasm, that camaraderie, that passion for being in this game and competing and having come back now 14 straight points, Boy, the cycle momentum certainly is headed in the right direction right now. Gary, I know you were talking about it. They weren't playing together. They're together right now. First and 10, Northern Illinois at their own 18, and this crowd is rocking. Horvath to throw. Sheldon will make a play, and will be pushed out of bounds. I'll tell you what, Jansen, right now, boy, he better take, he better take that... Uh, Take that uh, special team player, the uh, the number one on the punt block. Now you better take the offensive line out for <laughs> breakfast <laughs> because he saved it. He really, they really have. They've saved him. They've come back. Those plays, the block extra point, and then the two point conversion, those have saved saved his day. And look, that was the best kickoff he's had all day. Maybe the coach needs to just have that guy sitting over there warm up all day to keep that in mind. Say, hey, you know what? You can be replaced just as well. First and 10 from the 30, a penalty flag down. As Horvath will just throw it away. Conversely for Northern Illinois, though, they've ran into some problems today, too, on the special teams. With, I mean, had a block punt, yeah. recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. They've also had a block extra point as well. Yeah, you know, those are the, those are the things, and, and uh, those are the things that you just, the special teams, and people, they don't realize, you know, the, the three aspects, offense, defense, and special teams, you've got to be clicking in all three offense. areas. And Not if you don't, and script. look, all their Five problems with, their sec the, with the uh, things the happened with the block down. punt, that's where these things started going downhill for them. It's key. You've got to be key. You've got to be successful. And you've got to keep focus in all three areas or things can change. Gary, that was just the second time in this half that Northern Illinois has been flagged for not having enough man on the line of scrimmage. 
For the game, each team has seven penalties. Cyclones have had more yards tacked on them. First and 15 with the ball at the 24. Here's Harris. Boy, he eludes the first two tacklers, but takes it up to about the 26. Brings up second and long. Number eight, Steve Harris, and number 11, Dallas Hobbs. Well, we knew that this game was going to be a dogfight, and there's still plenty of time left in this contest. I mean, each team has had a big lead, and they've seen it disappear. Oh, it just goes to show you the momentum, and uh, you, you can't lose focus. I always said, I thought you, I thought Northern Iowa, or Northern Illinois was going to sit there. I thought they were playing the bend, don't break, which I said, you can't play bend, don't break. Come out, attack them, keep bringing everything you got. Obviously, something happened in that Iowa State locker room at halftime that changed everything. Horvath to throw. Intended target. Was that tip? Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage as he was trying to hit Perez. Look at the pressure here by Iowa State. You got a Brunson linebacker. And a corner. Hicks was coming in too. So John Squidani, the defensive coordinator for Iowa State, really trying to heat up Orbath right now. Third and 12. Shotgun formation. Horvath will be picked by DeAndre Jackson. And Iowa State with excellent field position now. Well, I tell you what, you can feel that energy coming from the Iowa State fans and the Iowa State team. They're stepping up here wanting to play some football now. Let's take a look at this. The interception, I mean, DeAndre Jackson just stepped up and made a play. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what Horvath was looking at because there really wasn't anything there for him to be throwing at. Horvath with his third interception of the afternoon. First and 10, Iowa State. Flynn will run it out of the gun. Hicks will get the carry, and this time the play well defended by Northern Illinois. As it goes absolutely nowhere. I'll tell you that attack 4-3 defense, it's tough. It's tough for an offense to have a slow developing run play and be successful against that attacking 4-3 they run. You can see right there, they got through the line, that play slow developer. It was a long read with the quarterback exchange to the running back. You know, Travis Moore's had a big day. He's the one that made that tackle just a moment ago. He's really been able to put some pressure on the backfield for the Huskies. He's also the one that's hit the quarterback twice. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the eye, second and 12, Flynn. Finds his man, Davis. Hansborough on the tackle for Northern Illinois. Just running off the play oh, yeah. action. All day long he's got. Good open field tackle, wrapped him up. At least give him another opportunity. Five catches today for John Davis. 67 yards. First and 10, Iowa State at the Huskies, 17. They'll keep it on the ground now with Stevie Hicks. Stevie breaks through a tackle and down to near the five-yard line. Hansbro makes the touchdown saving tackle for Northern Illinois. Well, Ole Mo is definitely on the side of the Cardinal and Gold right now. Well, he's running like he, uh, <laughs> he's running like there ain't no, yeah, exactly. He's running like he's getting a paycheck. I'll tell you what, this guy here, he put his head out. I can hear that pop clear up here. Tied up at 34, Iowa State first and goal at the Northern Illinois 5. Out of the eye with a two tight end set. Here's Hicks. He goes nowhere. <laughs> kind of a leg <laughs> tackle by Ray Smith, made sure he got him down. Boy, we saw Brett Meyer primarily in that first half. Played a little bit here in the second half. Now Iowa State 
going with Austin Flynn. We mentioned the Cyclones going with who's been hot at quarterback, and Austin Flynn certainly on a three drives here in the second half, especially on this one right here. And the game tying score. He's really had the hot hand here for the Cyclones. Here's an option. And Northern Illinois is really starting to stiffen up inside of that five-yard line. That's a little bit harder. You know, the offense doesn't have as much to do when they get inside the red zone here. And it uh, actually, it's beneficial for the defense in areas like this. I'll tell you, you, you know, you're, you, you're talking about Austin Flynn. How unnerving is it to, to be Brent Myers sitting over there on the sideline right now? And Austin Flynn has just, this team is right around him. The momentum's come on his side. He's taking it down, 14 points scored. The paid route to Blythe. Make it 21. 21 points scored. That's all he does is catch touchdowns. His third touchdown of the day. They need to be doing this the whole time. That guy's got him by a foot and a half. <laughs> all he has to do is out jump him. And he ties an Iowa State record with Damian Gross for most touchdowns in a game for Iowa State. Caught. And now Iowa State will add the extra point. They went for two last time, but now with a six-point advantage, they're going to try to add the extra point. Brian Jansen, the freshman out of Overland Park, Kansas. Chris Love will hold. That one looked good. That one is through, and it's a seven-point lead for Iowa State with 5.13 left to go in the ball game. You're watching college football here on FSN. Take a journey through the world of your favorite films and original series at FoxMovieChannel.com. Our movie pages help you find the biggest stars, the most influential directors, key plot summaries, and behind-the-scenes facts about movies in our lineup. How sweet. And now you can share your love of movies with e-postcards. Send e-greetings to all of your film-loving friends. Updated each month with the hottest Fox Movie Channel stars. Make it sound so attractive. Hold a backlot pass for exclusive interviews with Hollywood legends. Get the inside scoop on our original shows and specials, including the highly acclaimed Fox Movie Channel Hour of Stars. Download our monthly calendar right to your desktop. Let's get crazy. And never miss your favorites again. Fox Movie Channel is your link behind the screen to web-only contests and other insider extras. Your online connection to the world of 20th Century Fox Movies. FoxMovieChannel.com NFL Sunday returns this September. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week on FSN is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. And by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Seven point lead for Iowa State, 513 to go in the game. Huskies are going to be up against the wall here with just or they have all three timeouts remaining don't have to burn one wolf will take it himself and he'll be wrangled down inside of the 20 yard line good special teams play made by iowa state as jason scales makes the tackle and gary for northern illinois last couple of offensive sets they have not looked good at all what do they have to do to try to march it down the field well i'll tell you what uh They've got, it appears to me they've kind of, I don't know, they seem to be doing all right. I think that the Iowa State defense has just stepped up to the plate and has, you know, put the kibosh on what they've been doing all day finally. I think they got to keep doing what they're doing, keep executing, get rid of these penalties. These penalties are what's killing them. First and 10 from their own 15. They'll keep it on the ground with Harris. They've marched the football down the field effectively here in the second half. In fact, one drive was over 98 yards. But Iowa State's defense play, is playing a heck of a lot better than what it was on that drive. 
But Marcus Hicks now in at corner. He's added some inspired play for Iowa State here today. Second and six. Horvath to throw. Goes with a screen play. Harris runs up near the first down marker. Held about a yard shy. Tyson Smith will wrap him up. And Harris is grimacing right now. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Tyson Smith, that guy's around the football an awful lot. An official's timeout as Harris is injured on the play. A.J. Harris, and that's not what Northern Illinois really wants to see. They've already had a back miss today's game. Adrian Davis out with a bad ankle, but A.J. Harris is their primary or featured eye back. The 6'1", 219-pound junior out of Wheaton, Illinois. Seven-point lead for Iowa State. As Harris is being helped off the field, he's holding his right wrist. Today, Iowa State's cross-country men's team competed in the Midwest meet. And Harris expected to do good things for Northern Illinois, and they knew it right away because during the spring game, his very first carry... For Coach Joe Novak went for 65 yards. <laughs> Anytime you get that, you know, and you try to build up the environment. I know it's just a spring game, but you know you've got a pretty good running back when you can do certain things like that. He primarily backed up Michael the Burner Turner. And today, he's been the workhorse for him. 29 carries, as you saw, for 94 yards. Third down and one. Garrett Wolf will be in the deep tailback. Horvath will keep it himself, and he won't get it. Tyson, Smith, and company hold him up. Boy, great interior push there by Iowa State. Yeah, it worked once before. It didn't work this time. I tell you, that Iowa State defense has stepped up. They're ready for the little things that are going on. That's right here. Offensive line got no push off the ball. Not saw, at all. saw Brent Curve, number 52. Flying him underneath, and here's a big fourth down. There's a lot of time left. 3.36 to go in the ball game. Fourth and one. Northern Illinois at their own 24-yard line. This could be the ball game. Horvath will drop back. Pressure's on. He'll elude the tackler. He's got to let it go, and he'll be sacked. Matt Robertson applying the pressure. Tell you what, that's the inexperience of a young quarterback right there. He saw that pressure coming to him, nothing there. He needed to get that ball out of there and out of bounds. Boy, should have never taken that, that sack. And Iowa State's offense will take over with 3.19 to go in the game. Let's go down to Karen Schulte. I tell you what, that's the ninth sack for the Cyclones on the season. They had eight total last year. That just shows what kind of improvement the defensive line has made. Those front four, awfully tough. Certainly has, and Iowa State's offense trying to grind it out here as the lined up out of the power formation. And Hicks will take it himself and claw his way inside of the 15-yard line. Lionel Hickenbottom with the tackle for Northern Illinois. Brings up second down. And for the Cyclones here, I'm sure they just want to grind out the clock. And, boy, that was a risky move by Northern Illinois going for deep inside of their own territory with 3.39 to go in the game. Well, you know, it, it, I think it comes back a lot to last, last year, you know. Coach Novak is saying, what do we got to lose? Yeah. You know what? If we can get it done, let's get it done. I have faith in you guys, that, and that's why I'm making this call. And you know what? I think that has a lot. I think these players would run through a wall for Coach Novak. Now the defense trying to step up for Northern Illinois. It's a seven-point lead. The Huskies will burn a timeout here. Seven-point lead for Iowa State. You're watching college football here on FSN. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. Is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise, not a test. I'm Lady Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. I'm number one, the cup staff. Nobody knows who's staff two, and we can't get the cup hit. The door won't open.
This is Fuel TV, the network dedicated to the world of action sports. Featuring skateboarding, surfing, BMX, freestyle moto, snowboarding, and wakeboarding. Oh, I wanna go. Only on Fuel TV can you experience the energy and danger that define action sports. Fuel TV, action sports television. Seven point lead for Iowa State as they have the ball inside of the 20 yard line of Northern Illinois facing a third and eight from the 16. This is a big third down here because otherwise then Iowa State has a big decision to make. Flynn out of the shotgun. He'll run the option and try to take it himself. And he'll get it inside of the 15 yard line. Now what does Iowa State do? Do you put that field goal unit out on the field or do you try to run it on fourth down? You got a seven point lead, 223, 222 rather, to go in the game. Let's go to Karen Schulte. Here on the Northern Illinois sideline now, it looks like A.J. Harris is probably going to be done for the day. It's actually his right shoulder that they're working on. They've taken off all of his gears, pads, and, and uniform, and they have him iced up. And uh, looks like they're going to try to keep him as healthy as they can and, and going into that Bowling, uh, Bowling State, Bowling Green game uh, going uh, coming up next weekend. Thank you very much, Karen. And Harris had a big day today, but took one too many shots to the right shoulder. Now for Iowa State, you know, the timeout taken by Northern Illinois, that leaves them with one timeout remaining. You see the kind of the walking wounded there on the Northern Illinois sideline with Josh Haldy. And, of course, A.J. Harris now. And You know, this is this is a big decision here. This is this is huge. I, you know, do you go with the momentum in the, in the, in the, and put it on your defense to stop the, the Northern Illinois offense? Do you... Do you Take a shot with Jansen, give him an opportunity to redeem himself and and uh, maybe put the clincher on uh, the victory. I don't know. I'm glad I'm not making this decision. Iowa State has scored 21 points unanswered in the last 14 minutes, as you see. And Jansen will have the win behind him as he'll try to, or excuse me, Grave is kicking. <laughs> as he'll be trying to boot would be a 30-yard attempt. Love will hold. The snap, the hold down, the kick up by Crava is up, and it is no good. Wow. There's an epidemic with the kickers for Iowa State. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah. Hey, got closer than Jansen. Here's the kick, and he just pushed it to the left, and it hits the ball, the upright. Yeah, you know, I probably shouldn't say that stuff. You know, I, like I said, I pick on these kickers all the time and too much. But, you know, what, do you, what did you have to lose in Iowa State's shoes right here? Iowa State's defense has been shutting them down for the last four series. Hey, let the defense win the game. That's yep. what they're there for. If they made it, it would have been the knockout punch. Horvath, the work, you know, overthrows intended target. Yeah. Dan almost, Sheldon. It was almost over right there. Now for Northern Illinois with Horvath, the sophomore, he's thrown three interceptions today. He's also made some other great plays, thrown a touchdown or two as well. He's just got to settle down, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he was rolling just fine. I think what happened is Iowa State finally come out and said, hey, let's do it. Got after like they've been doing all year. Finally got some pressure on him. And that's what they needed to do on the get-go. They needed to get out there, get pressure on him, get him rattled. And they've been doing that this second half. They didn't do it the first half. This one goes incomplete as well. In and out of the hands of his intended target, and it will bring up third and 10. And for Northern Illinois, figure they don't have to get all 10 right here, but they need some positive yardage here on third down. Just to get the ball moving. Horvath to work, fires it over the middle and under throws Sheldon incomplete. And now it's fourth and ten. Tyson Smith was right there kind of putting a little bit of pressure on him, it looks like. Well, he's had a strong season, and he moved down from outside linebacker to defensive end. 
during fall drill. So Coach Joe Novak going for it here again, as you would figure, on fourth and ten. Huskies at their own 20-yard line. They'll run out of the shotgun. Fourth down conversions today. No one's been able to get one. Has some time. Horvath steps up, hit as he throws, and it goes incomplete. When Nick Leaders applied the hit for Iowa State, Phil Horvath might be seeing Nick Leaders in his dreams tonight. Well, oh, that's a spike. <laughs> Drive him into the ground. 2:02 to go in the or 203 to go in the game. I'm going to tell you something, BJ. That right there is a great feeling of the defensive lineman. I've got him wrapped up, and legally, I can plant him into the ground. So I'm going to put my shoulder right under his chin and jam it in there as hard as I can because he don't want me to hit him again. <laughs> Austin Flynn will remain at quarterback for Iowa State. He's been at that position most of the second half. First and 10 at the Northern Illinois 20, the give to Hicks. He'll take it down inside of the 20. And now, timeout taken by Northern Illinois. That's their last timeout. Still, if they make a couple of plays here. Yeah, very possible. You know, stranger things have happened. That's what's great about this game of football right here, BJ. Timeouts remaining. You see Northern Illinois is out of them. As now the Huskies will try to regroup defensively here and try to get another three and out and force that kicking unit maybe back onto the field for Iowa State. One for our Wisconsin viewers watching on FSN North. We now take you to the Pac-10 match between Wisconsin and Arizona. Here, still a seven-point lead for Iowa State over Northern Illinois. As the Cyclones facing a second and eight as the Huskies just burned their last timeout. Again, they'll run out of the I formation. Flynn will give it to Hicks. Just right up the middle, and this will take some time off the clock, and he'll take a pretty good chunk off as the officials try to get the pile undone and set that football to get that play clock going again. Yeah, this is probably got to you know, for Coach Novak. You know, last week, uh, two weeks ago, not getting the ball set down and spotted quick enough against Maryland, thinking that maybe they had one more opportunity to get the ball. I believe it was against the Maryland team, and the referees let, basically just let the time run off the clock. I'll tell you, you know, you, 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 you kind of got a feel for Northern, uh, Northern Illinois a little bit in the fact that, you know, 10-2 and two last year, no bowl game. Kind of feel like they've got the short end of the stick on a couple of uh, refing things this year, you know. But to come into a Big 12 stadium and compete with Iowa State oh, right. the way that they did today and improved Iowa State team over a year ago, you know they're going to compete heavily in the back. Same can be said for Iowa State. Ahead for them, they've got the Big 12 conference schedule after a week off next week. They travel down to Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State. And they've got, in, 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 in all reality, they've got the easier part of the South this year as well. Fourth down, Iowa State will keep it on the ground. Here's Stevie Hicks, and he'll be held shy of that first down, and that will stop the clock with 29 seconds to play. The Huskies will have it first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. So they've got 86 yards to go to try to tie this one up. Thanks, thanks a lot, guys. Or at least pull within one. Yeah. Because <laughs> nothing is a given on the extra points today. What a ball game, though, we've had. The ups, the downs for both teams. Yeah. Right now, Iowa State feeling the major up. Horvath, back to pass. Lobs it over the middle, and it's picked off. Robertson's got it, and he'll take it to the house. 
Well, BJ, that pretty much puts a clincher on it all right here, I think. Matt Robertson with a touchdown score for Iowa State. The 6'1", 230-pound sophomore out of Sunrise, Florida, gets to live a dream, scoring a touchdown. To, to, to basically put the put the kibosh in the, and take the victory, take it home, put it in your pocket. I've got it. Now it's time to go on. Coach Dan McCarney getting some well-deserved handshakes and high fives on the sideline as, boy, he held his team together throughout this one, faced a lot of adversity. And they're going to be able to put a W on the board. The extra point. Good. 14-point lead for Iowa State. Here's that touchdown again. Horvath just dumped it over the middle. And Robertson able to return it. That's got to be a great feeling. Great feeling. Are oh, there still... Iowa State very happy with the score right now and heading into a bye week with a lot of momentum. Putting 48 points up on the board today. We had 48 at halftime for both of these two teams combined. 34 for Northern Illinois. They put up a big fight. How about that? 28 unanswered points by Iowa State after being down by 14. Well, I don't know how you must feel the Northern Illinois player right now. Just, you know, after going, after going in half being up so far, coming out and basically, you know, thinking that maybe you probably put the nail in the coffin and all of a sudden Iowa State puts it on. And here we go. And here's the return by Wolf. He'll take it to the 43-yard line, 44. And 11 seconds to go in the game. May have a fumble as the officials sort out the pile now. Nope. Caleb Burke, number 21, making the Iowa State Northern stop. Illinois will get one more crack at it, but this one's said and done. A 14-point lead for Iowa State. What a great game today. Oh, this was if awesome. If you like offense. Oh, yeah, And absolutely. special teams play, good and bad. <laughs> this was your game. <laughs> Poor Bath will line up out of the shotgun. Cyclones playing prevent defense. Poor Bath will fire to the man underneath, and it's caught by Sheldon. That'll stop the clock with five seconds as he took it beyond the first down marker inside of the 45-yard line. Huskies. Not quite over, four seconds remaining. And the clock will start as Horvath will have one more play. He'll fire it down the field and it will be caught by Sheldon. And he'll take it into the end zone. Wow. But a flag on the play. Is he across the line of scrimmage? We'll find out. That was on defense. Like the signal down on the field away from us was on the defense, so the touchdown does count. Here's a look at this one again. Well, it's never over till it's over, right? That's but true. there's no more uh, time on the clock, so it, we, we, all intents and purposes, <laughs> it's over. Now we'll just wait for the extra point. It's either going to be an eight-point win for Iowa State or a seven. Bendick on to add the extra point. Horvath will hold, and this one's up and good. And that will end the ball game. 48-41. Cyclones come up with a victory over Northern Illinois. Neil B. Davies. All right, so Iowa State picks up the win, 48-41. We thank you so much for watching college football here today on FSN. Again, the Cyclones win it, 48-41 over Northern Illinois. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a pleasant good afternoon.
everybody. Welcome to a special edition of the Buffalo Stampede. Dave Benz coming to you from the club level at Folsom Field, and I'm joined by a very special guest, CU Athletic Director Mike Bone. And uh, before we get into the specifics of the season ahead, first things first, uh, it's good to see you. Welcome back uh, to uh, another season here at CU. I know you got here at the tail end of last year. Uh, how have things gone as you've got prepared for uh, a full season, your first full season athletic director? Well, I'll tell you what, the first uh, 72 days, according to Dave Platty, have, have just been a, a, a great ride. And uh, we're really enjoying having a lot of fun working with this team, which is the Colorado Buffaloes. And uh, we're looking forward to a great fall and a, and a great season overall. All right. Well, we're going to break things down for you coming up over the next half hour. I want to uh, give the folks at home a look at what they can expect as we have this special edition of the Buffalo Stampede. We're going to take a look at the 2005 football schedule. Uh, Mike, of course, will address the state of the athletic department. I'll also be joined by a couple of the CU buffs, and uh, we'll discuss the 2005 season ticket plan and the Your Team campaign. And first things first, uh, I want to ask you, Mike, about the football team and the expectations you have for the team as they gear up for their 2005 season. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it's really been fun to be around them this summer. They are working their tail off and doing a great job, and what a great group of young men. Gary should, and his staff should be very proud of the type of, of kids that they have on their in their program and boy 80 percent graduation rate over the last uh, six years that's pretty impressive uh we take a look at the schedule that is coming up for this team this year this is not an easy schedule that the colorado buffaloes will be taking on uh, especially at the road schedule the two games that stand out to me at texas at Miami, uh, this Buff team is going to have to earn their W's this season. Well, there's no question about it, but I really believe that the University of Colorado has always played great marquee games on the road. And uh, to have our first three games uh, nationally televised, the first two to the entire country, and the, and the third game against Miami to be a, a split national, I mean, that, that's impressive and a great opportunity to feature not only our football program, but this great institution. What does it say, you think, about this institution that they continually play such a tough schedule? They, I mean, obviously the Big 12 Conference conference inherently is going to be tough, but then they go out of conference and schedule in Miami, and obviously the rivalry with CSU, and we all know from last year's game, which came right down to the wire, that that's uh, not a given any time those two teams get on the field. No, it, it never is, but again, I think that that's really what the University of Colorado is about, is it playing at the highest level against the best teams and playing on national television and exposing this great city, this great state, and uh, this great institution to the country. Now, you recently uh, went around the country, we're going to talk about that later in the show, and you've gone and had town hall meetings and talked with fans trying to gear up season ticket uh, sales. But let's talk a little bit about how important the fans are. What do the fans mean to the Colorado Buffaloes? Well, I, I, I think there's no question about it that our fans really are the heartbeat of our program. And it starts with our, our students and to uh, be able to visit with the student leadership this summer and others associated with the program. I mean, the, the fans are everything. And I really believe that's why the Your Team campaign was born because it is their team. And they ought to have pride in enjoying the Colorado Buffaloes and obviously we all know we have the greatest mascot in the country and obviously one of the best cities and states in the nation and, and why not? And season ticket sales for football really kind of help drive the rest of the athletic department, don't they? Well, there's no question about it. When you look at the, the opportunities that the football program brings as far as the revenue, as far as the exposure, all the different things, it's really the platform for the rest of the program and it supports all of our teams. Well, Mike, uh, it should be a good fall. We're going to talk a little bit more with you a little bit later on in the show, but right now we're going to take our first time out here on the special edition of the Buffalo Stampede. When we come back, we are going to be joined by the starting quarterback for the Colorado Buffaloes football team. I speak of senior Joel Klatt. That's going to be after this time out. Stick around. We're back with more right after this. Order up. What's the matter, baby? My girlfriend, Aisha, she left me. Oh, that skinny. She took my appetite and my ability to love. Oh, baby, here, try your sandwich with a Pepsi. You, you got what I need. But you said you so tell me what you think about my eyes again, player. Oh, Sandwiches need Pepsi. It's the cola. Folsom Field has always been about tradition. It's been about big runs, big crowds, and big stories. And it's always been about being the best on and off the field. From national championships to Big 12 championships. You have always been there for your bus. And this fall, the bus will be there for you. Colorado Buffaloes, your team. To order tickets, call 303-49-BUFFS or 887-BUFFS.
I knew something was really wrong. Life shouldn't have to wait while you get well. We really examined what our alternatives were. Cyberknife, a revolutionary new radio surgery for tumors, lets you get on with living. And I was able to get up after an hour. There wasn't any pain. It was that easy. Rocky Mountain Cyberknife, only at Boulder Community Hospital. Because life goes on. I love rockin' football towns. Refs who shout for down. Back to back Super Bowl wins. And twins. I love making quarterbacks cry. Being one of the guys. A big friend full of beer. And those twins. And I love you too. Unleash the Rocky Mountain cold taste of Coors Light. Two tight ends out there, back to the eye, tail the tan of his purify, play action, flat, rifles in the back of the end zone, Joel Coppers side, bobbles, comes down with the football, touchdown Colorado, and the Bucks are on top, now by 13 points over K-State with 435 to play in the third quarter. Uh, one of the many memorable plays from last season, Joel Klatt to Joel Klopfenstein for a touchdown right here at Folsom Field, and uh, happy to have you. Welcome back, and I have to say congratulations because this has been an eventful summer for you. Why don't you tell the folks at home what happened this past summer? It has. About uh, a little over a month ago, about two months ago, I was uh, married the beautiful former Sarah Ordway, now Sarah Klatt. So um, uh, uh, she's just my, my partner in life, and I can't wait to, to grow old with her. How well, congratulations on that. I'm uh, sure you just scored some serious points if she's watching the show. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how she's reacted to you being so busy. I'm sure she's a spring practice. Well, that's nothing new. Obviously, you guys have been uh, dating for a long time prior to the marriage. But uh, how has the marriage fit in with your schedule as a quarterback for a major Division One college football program? It's been good. Uh, you know, Sarah understands that uh, I need a lot of support, obviously, just, just like any man out there. So uh, she's been phenomenal through all that and uh, you know this spring obviously was uh, our engagement and we went through that and we were dating last fall so she knows some of the details that uh, I have to deal with uh, during uh, the weekdays and so you know she handles it really well. Uh, you mentioned the spring how was the spring practice for this team coming off the Big 12 North Championship um, obviously the Big 12 Championship game didn't go the way you guys would have liked but you did get a bowl win well, was the team fired up to build upon that as, as you practiced during the spring? Yeah absolutely Coach Barnett made it a point to uh, really hand the team over to the juniors and the underclassmen uh, with you know all due respect to the seniors who had a phenomenal career uh, over the, their four years, really handed us the team for that bowl week and said, uh, this is the first game of next year. And, and we had a nice little rally cry there, and, and we went out and took care of business. And uh, it was really the first step of the long off season to get ready for this fall and, and as you alluded to earlier, our uh, tough road schedule. Was it a little strange taking the field during spring practice and you looked around and you said, okay, where's Bobby Purify? Where's <laughs> yeah. Matt McChesney? Uh, you did lose a couple of key guys. You have a lot of guys back, but, but the, the guys you did lose were some pretty important leaders on this team. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously for me, turning around and, and not seeing number 42 was kind of a shock. You know, I, I was so used to how he... Uh, took the ball on handoffs and things like that. You know, we'll, we'll definitely miss Bobby, not only as a football player, but mainly as a person. So, uh, you know, all those other seniors, Sam Wilder, Matt McChesney, we wish them the best of luck in, in their endeavors. I know they're all in getting ready for training camp right now, but uh, this team has some outstanding leaders that have stepped up. Brian New on the defense, um, James Gary on the defense, Joe Kloffenstein, who you've mentioned, and, and myself have been able to step up. Uh, you mentioned also uh, the, the backfield, Lawrence Vickers, a guy. I know he's not very shy. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Anyone that knows Lawrence knows that he can light up a room, uh, whatever his mood is. So uh, Lawrence is going to be one of those guys that needs to drive our offense, not only uh, with his talent, but emotionally. So, uh, you know, getting Lawrence will, the ball will definitely be a priority for me and, and for Coach Watson as, as uh, you know, we do the game plan every week. As you look back on last season, I know you went through maybe a little bit of a slump a couple games in, and, and you were pulled from the starting lineup. Uh, what are your goals uh, you set for yourself as you go into your senior season? Well, any quarterback, if, if I sat up here and told you that, you know, I didn't think about personal goals, I'd be lying. But 
with uh, personal goals comes team, team achievements. If our team is doing well, our offense is moving the ball, that means that I'm doing my job. So the uh, number one thing for me to do is to run an efficient offense and, and get the right people the ball so that they can make the big plays and, and then uh, you know just sit back at the end of the day and, and hope we ran an effect, effective offense for four quarters. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about the fans. I know Mike Bone talked about it a little bit in the first segment, but as a player, from a player's perspective, when you're out there on the field, how much do they mean to the, the football team and how fired up and how much impact can they have on when you guys are coming out onto the field? Well, you know, there's no question about it. Home field advantage in college football uh, can just carry a team. People tend to forget that we're just amateur athletes, mostly between 18 and 22, or in my case, a little older than 22. But, um, you know, kids that age can really ride on emotion. And when you get uh, 50,000 fans in here and, and, and they start getting rowdy, all of a sudden you get some 20-year-olds that get their blood boiling. And in the college football game, it, it really impacts the game, having a uh, an environment that really charges your team up, especially defensively, as everyone knows. So uh, home field advantage is of the utmost, I would say. And, and this atmosphere here with the fans right on top of the, the field just provides that for us. Well, we're looking forward to seeing that home field advantage in full effect coming up September 3rd when Colorado opens up the football season against Colorado State. Joel, thanks for thanks. joining us. We're going to take another time out here on the Stampede. Oh, when we come back, we'll be joined by... Bucks linebacker will show just what it's like to make a huge hit in a huge game. Let's back up to this time. You got ID? Okay. Nothing goes better with leftovers than some ice cold Pepsi. It's the cola. Folsom Field has always been about tradition. It's been about big runs, big crowds, and big stories. And it's always been about being the best on and off the field. From national championships to Big 12 championships. You have always been there for your bus. And this fall, the bus will be there for you. Colorado Buffaloes, your team. To order tickets, call 303-49-BUFFS or 887-BUFFS. Champ Sports, where sport lives. Now? Shh, not yet. Okay, guys, he's looking. And now. Honey, honey, they're, they're doing it again. You really do need a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody, welcome back to a special edition of the Buffalo Stampede. It's all right. Make some noise. It's yeah. fine. We got some Buffs fans in the house here at Folsom Field on the club level. We are gearing up for another season of Buffs football. Joined now by Colorado Buffalo's linebacker, Akarika Don. Akarika, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Uh, first things first, I want to ask you about the summer. How'd that go for you? It's going pretty well, you know. Uh, me being a senior, I got to get all the young guys prepared for the season. And, uh, you know, pretty much taking the reins as you know, the senior and getting ready for my last season. And uh, our la our, as a senior, our last season, you know, to go out with a bang. Uh, last segment, we talked with Joel Clad, who said he had gotten married over the summer. Uh, does, he doesn't take any ribbing from you guys for that, does he? Nah, you just tell how old he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that hopefully old means experience, and hopefully that's going to be a benefit on the field for the Buffs yeah. this season. Um, the Your Team campaign is something which is being highlighted by the Buffaloes this season. I guess that's the slogan for the football team. Uh, how has that kind of trickled down towards the guys on the field? Well, we hear about all the, like, you know, the, the ideas for, 
for unity in the community and all, as well as the team. So we feel it's, it's, it's great because we feel that we have a backing from the community also. And how saying how the team is the community's team. This is Boulder's team. You know, this is the University of Colorado is a family, not just here. And that's, a, that's a great feeling to us because we feel like we get support for everyone around us. And uh, it's a great feeling to know that, you know, we're not just supported in Dow Ward or on campus. You can go around in the community and know that people are behind you and fighting for you. You're somebody who played high school football in Texas, so you know what football in a community means. Do you feel that as as prevalent here as you did in Texas, or? That's a bad question. <laughs> 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 nah, it, it, feels, it feels somewhat the same, but it's different because those people you, you grew up with, and those are, that's your family, you know, actually you grew up, you know, next door to those people, you know. But here it's different because they love you even though they don't know you, you know. They see you on TV and they still love you just because you, you wear the uniform and you come in, you came, you know, from various spots, you know, you got to get out from Texas, California. They love us because we came here to support their team, so. Let's talk a little bit about the season ahead. Uh, we talked about the schedule a little bit. Is there one game that stands out that you kind of have circled that, you know, you're saying to yourself, this is when we're going to know what this team is made of? Well, I'm kind of selfish. I'm from Texas, so going down to Austin is going to be the one I, I treasure most because my family will be there. Like, a lot of people I went to high school with go to school at the University of Texas. And just the fact that I left Texas to, just to so I can play Texas. Cause I'm not a Texas fan at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. We like to hear that here in Colorado. Uh, as far as the Buffs are concerned, what is going to be the key to success on the field this year? Just, just our team worrying about our team, not who we playing, where we playing at, or what we doing. Because we have the nucleus to do what we want and to take care of business. So if we concentrate mostly on taking care of our business, everything else will be taken care of. One last thing I want to ask you before I let you go. Uh, you had one of the one of the guys on your team, Mason Crosby, get named to the Playboy All-American team. Uh, I'm sure that must have gotten talked about a little bit during spring practice. No, I didn't know that. Really, <laughs> you did not know that. Did so you didn't get the, invi the invitation to the mansion. Everybody else went but you. Man, that's, that's not funny. <laughs> no, no uh, we, we heard about it. We knew about it, and uh, it's a. Uh, that's, that's an honor, you know, because that reflects on us. Because when an when individual gets an uh, accolade, we all get it. You know, if somebody's first in Big 12, they, they don't say, you know, they're by themselves. They're from Colorado. So the fact that, you know, Macy's recognized nationally now, that means we're going to get the national rec recognition because people are going to watch TV to see how Mason kicks. So when they watch Mason, they're watching us. It's got to be good for you guys to know in a close game, you've got a, a great weapon there. Alcarico, yeah. thanks for making time for us. Thanks for having me. Good luck this season. We're going to take one final break. Back with more of Mike Bowen. Yeah. Old hard fact, the higher the elevation, the lower the temperature. That's why every single Coors Light is born right here in the Rockies. And when beer starts out this cold, it ends up this refreshing. Coors Light, our goal, the coldest tasting beer in the world. Folsom Field has always been about tradition. It's been about big runs, big crowds, and big stories. And it's always been about being the best on and off the field. From national championships to Big 12 championships. You have always been there for your bus. And this fall, the bus will be there for you. Colorado Buffaloes, your team. To order tickets, call 303-49-BUFFS or 887-BUFFS. I knew something was really wrong. Life shouldn't have to wait while you get well. We really examined what our alternatives were. Cyberknife, a revolutionary new radio surgery for tumors, lets you get on with living. And I was able to get up after an hour. There wasn't any pain. It was that easy. Rocky Mountain Cyberknife, only at Boulder Community Hospital. Because life goes on. Cold hard fact. The higher the elevation, the lower the temperature. That's why every single Coors Light is born right here in the Rockies. And when beer starts out this cold, it ends up this refreshing. Coors Light. Our goal, the coldest tasting beer in the world. And welcome back to this special edition of the Buffalo Stampede. Happy to have our live audience, something we're not used to for the Stampede, but it is good to feel the energy. 
still roughly two months removed from the season opener as we welcome Mike and Mike Bone back to the program. You feel the energy in this room. That's got to fire you up as the athletic director. Well, I tell you what, the energy since I've arrived from everybody trying to work together because, again, the Your Team campaign is what? Team is an acronym for Together Everyone Accomplishes More. And obviously, people are excited about that. So I think that virtually every constituent group that we're dealing with understands that if we'll work together, then we can have a lot of fun and that it'll be a great thing for this university. And obviously, the energy that our volunteers and great people like uh, that are with us here tonight make a difference. And they make a difference. And our fans make a difference. And if you saw the spark in our student athletes as they talk about the season, they recognize when Rafi hits that field and those fans are behind him and, and the heartbeat of the students like I talked about and our marching band and the spirit squad I get fired up because you know what I think that's great and that's a type of chemistry and enthusiasm we've got to continue to bring every every home game Mike if I'm sitting at home watching this why should I buy season tickets to watch the Colorado Buffaloes play football this year? Well, first of all, I think it's the greatest environment in America to watch a game. And I think that the city of Boulder is welcoming. I think we've got a great marching band. We obviously talked about the great mascot. I think it's exciting football. The Big 12 Conference is the best football in America. I really believe that. And I think that, that if you want to come and enjoy pageantry and being around a great program and taking great pride in, in Colorado and great pride in this institution, again, it's an opportunity for us to feature all the great things that are happening on campus, in our state, and uh, let everybody have fun. It's a great rallying point for whether you're a faculty member, a student, an alum, a community member, a, 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 a young child in the area that you want to come and be around a team. That's what makes it fun. So I don't know why you wouldn't want to come on Saturday. Well, and it, cru it truly is a team, not just the team on the field, but the team behind the scenes as well. In fact, right now we want to introduce you to some of the folks who helped make the CU Buffs go. Here's a closer look at the sales team for the University of Colorado. Well, as a, as a fan and supporter, it means uh, community involvement, getting the community back involved in CU sports, in particular the football season. I'm really excited about the new energy that's come into the athletic department, and the Your Team campaign means to me that they're really trying to reach out to the community and trying to reach out to the common fans. Right now, I feel an enthusiasm coming about that uh, is going to turn this program into one of the best in the country. And we're establishing traditions that are going to carry on for forever. And uh, that's what's really exciting about it. And there is nothing better than the game day experience, especially for football. I've been a season ticket holder now for 35 years. And when this place is full, it's hard for a team to beat us. Really, for me, it's about the student athletes. and I think that they deserve to play in front of a full house and for me I, I see how hard they work and how much they dedicate themselves and, and if there's a full house that means that there's more money for scholarships and more money for facilities. It's your team and if you want your team to be successful uh, it looks bad not having the stands full. It looks bad not giving all the support that we can garner throughout the state for the, for the University of Colorado. Of course this is the best place to spend a Saturday afternoon and it is the flagship university of the state and deserves the support, deserves, um, this place deserves to be full on Saturday. Even if you didn't go to school here, even if you didn't grow up here, you can still love this program. You can still love the, the university. Being involved more than just as a fan has been very exciting for me. Uh, and when people come to our games, it, when we get them here, they're going to keep coming because it's, it is such an exciting experience here. Well, there's a look at the team behind the team. And it's a message, Mike, that you've been spreading throughout the region. You've been going around and hosting some town hall meetings to kind of spread the word uh, about just what is going on here at the University of Colorado. Well, that's exactly what we want to be. We want to be transparent and try and reach out and be a friend first. And I tell you, it's been fun. And our volunteers are the greatest. And we're lucky to have them support us. And again, if everyone will work together, this could be really special for us. And uh, again, everybody can take pride in a great program and the uh, Colorado Buffaloes. And here's the thing, the more support this program gets, the better the program can get because then the improvements which have been talked about for so long, uh, new, new equipment, new facilities, all that will kind of, it all, it's all dominoes that one knocks the other over, isn't it? 
Well, there's no question about it. And the Your Team campaign on the fundraising side also is very, very important for us. And we're excited about the response we've had there again. And uh, there's a terrific wave of energy and excitement right now. And I'm really proud to be the athletic director at the University of Colorado because the Colorado Buffaloes are your team. And we really urge you to be a part of it. All right. So we've said why you should buy. We've introduced you to the people behind the people. Now, if somebody's sitting there saying, OK, I want to buy, how do they go ahead and do that? Well, if they aren't contacted by one of our great volunteers or people that are hustling to help us, they can call the ticket office and our friendly ticket office will help them at 303-49-BUFFS. All right, one more time. We're going to put the schedule on the screen so you can take a look at just what you are buying as you buy a season ticket package for the University of Colorado and the football team. Mike, is there one game on there that has you excited? And probably this season opener, I would, I would guess. Well, there's right. no question about it. We need to be ready to go, and I know our fans will respond, and it'll be a great day for Colorado. All right, well, Mike, I want to thank you for stopping thank by. You, Dave. Here on the uh, Buffalo Stampede season, uh, special edition season opener, we'll be back on the air with head coach Gary Barnett uh, around the time that the season kicks off, so be sure to look for that right here on FSN Rocky Mountain. For now, though, I want to say so long. I want to thank my guests, of course, Athletic Director Mike Bone, also Senior Captain of the Colorado Buffaloes football team, Joel Klatt, and Senior Linebacker, Akarika Don. Just a couple of members of the Colorado Buffaloes football team who are looking forward to repeating the success of last year's Big 12 North Championship title. Until next time, everybody, Dave Ben saying so long here on FSN Rocky Mountain. Go Buffs! Buffalo Stampede has been brought to you by Pepsi, Coors Light, Nike, Boulder Community Hospital, and Frontier Airlines. Cold hard fact. The higher the elevation, the lower the temperature. That's why every single Coors Light is born right here in the Rockies. And when beer starts out this cold, it ends up this refreshing. Coors Light. Our goal, the coldest tasting beer in the world. Champ Sports, where sport lives. Order up. What's the matter, baby? My girlfriend, Aisha, she left me. Oh, that's skinny. She took my appetite and my ability to love. Oh, baby, here, try your sandwich with a Pepsi. You, you got what I need. But you said so tell me what you think about my eyes again, player. Oh, Sandwiches need Pepsi. It's the cola. Folsom Field has always been about tradition. It's been about big runs, big crowds, and big stories. And it's always been about being the best on and off the field. From national championships to Big 12 championships. You have always been there for your bus. And this fall, the bus will be there for you. Colorado Buffaloes, your team. To order tickets, call 303-49-BUFFS or 887-BUFFS. Now, there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The new network that brings you nearly 150 games from conferences like the Pac-10, Big 12, and more. Plus, local coaches shows and news from around the country. This is the network college football fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. X marks a daring pursuit of the unknown. X marks questions that need to be explored. Stories that need to be told. X marks the destination for unforgettable adventures. X marks Explorer Sundays. Only on the National Geographic Channel. Welcome to College Flash Classics. I'm Bob Pasella. 
November the 10th, 2001. Keenan Stadium plays host to an offensive showdown and one of the largest comebacks in ACC history. Wake Forest battling North Carolina. Julius Peppers, the future second overall pick in the NFL draft, and the Tar Heels proving to be a streaky bunch. At 0-3, UNC shocked Florida State 41-9, won four more in a row, and then lost to Georgia Tech. Meantime, Wake Forest under first-year coach Jim Grobe was 4-4, four four, with six of its eight games decided by a touchdown or less. This one would be no exception. North Carolina received the opening kick and was forced to punt. That's where we pick up the action as Wake has the ball third down on its own 26-yard line. Third and long for McPherson out of the shotgun. The five-step drop over the middle. The pass is tipped and it's tipped it. off. Quincy Monk kicks the ball off. It was tipped by David Barton. And that great linebacking crew turns a turnover for the Tar Heels. Terrific athletes cover the field. This is... I threw a pick on like the first drive and it was a screen. It was a little screen to, and a nice easy pass to our tailback. And as I'm just getting ready to flick it, it just, just kind of squirted out of my hand and just sailed over his head. And, and uh, I think it was Quincy Monk, their linebacker, just picked it off. At the Wake Forest 26 yard line after the turnover, play action now for Darian Durant. Scrambling, the pass to his back, Williams is complete. And he's up to the 18-yard line before he goes down in the hold of Obi Chukumwa. Let's take a look at the keys for success for Carolina today. they got to stop Wake's run. Well, they did a pretty good job of that in the first possession. Balance on offense. We've seen them try to run the ball a little bit more. And the most important one, win the special teams battle. They can't afford to let Wake get a big play on this. Gain of eight in that first play. Second down and two coming up. Off, last man in the stack, and that's Sam Williams, and he's brought down by Calvin Pace all alone. Wow. Let's see what Wake has to do to win the game. Obviously, they've got to avoid turnovers today. Well, that's the key. If they don't give the ball up with their style of offense, they'll consume clock, and they'll usually be dominant. Passing early down, kind of mix things up, try to get a big one, and of course, defensively, be disruptive. Go after Durant, again, who kid who missed some practice due to a tragedy in his family. Third down and five coming up now for the Tar Heels, trying to take advantage of this interception. No score, second possession for North Carolina. Durant has time, has a man, open, touchdown! North Carolina, Bosley Allen! Darren Durant was one of the finest athletes that I'd ever seen play college football. He could uh, throw on the run as about as well as anybody I'd seen. He, uh, he could throw, he could run. Great, great athlete. Uh, when he was plugged in and he had his mind on exactly what he was supposed to be doing, he was a really, really good college quarterback. Shades over to get the point after. Reed is just two away from tying the record for consecutive field goals without a miss set by Clint Walton. Reed's kick is up and it is good. And the Tar Heels take advantage of a Wake Forest turnover. The interception sets up this pass play of 21 yards. Darian Durant upstairs to Bosley Adam. 7 0 North Carolina. Meet Bob. Bob went to Arizona, his friend went to Nebraska, and their other friend, Florida State. Now they all live together in L.A. So how do they follow their favorite college teams? With Fox College Sports, featuring over 800 NCAA games each year on three regionally aligned channels, FCS Pacific, FCS Central, and FCS Atlantic. All the games that matter in one powerful package. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. Fox College Sports, where college never ends.
Fox NFL Sunday returns this September. The best damn sports show period. Weeknights on FSN. Six twenty-nine left to go in his first quarter. North Carolina leading at home, got seven nothing over Wake Forest. Here comes Darian Durant. He'll start his football team back at the eleventh yard line after the forty-one yard punt by Chris Raleigh of Wake Forest. Madison heads stop, and Andre Williams are behind him in the I formation. That's Corey Bailey across the post. And off goes Williams, and there's not much there. Wake Forest stout at the point of attack. And a big stop there by Bowling, and also in on the tackle, Jamie Scott. And it's a tale of two seasons for North Carolina. Here's the improvement. The rushing yards, though, unfortunately haven't been there, but the total yards offense, and they've done a better job converting turnovers. It's usually the tale for most successful teams. Little third down, minimizing turnovers, and run the football. This time they have been a lead because of a turnover. And Mark Lee thing about Wake Forest is, is they are a, the scrappiest team. All four years when I played them, they are just tough. They, um, they're not the most talented guys in, around, but they'll, uh, they'll play you harder than anybody will. And um, they, they really do a good job of using all their assets, all the, all the, the talent that they have. Gary Tranquil, the offensive coordinator, wants to avoid these situations this afternoon. Obvious pass situations. Wake Forest actually use a dime package here with six defensive backs. Durant, pass is complete. Durant has hit all five that he's thrown up today. Chesley Borders, the receiver here, out to the 29-yard line where it's going to be good for a Tar Heel first down. But a flag back down in the North Carolina backfield. Looks like it's against Wake. Offsides, defense, that penalty is refused. First down. Thank you, Jack Childress, our referee this afternoon. North Carolina was heavily favored over Wake Forest this day. They were at home. They were coming off a loss. They were a little bit mad. I thought North Carolina was really going to stick it to the Deacons on this afternoon. He has a nice arm, but he has a great feel for it. He always is able, he's able to get the ball out of his hands while the receiver is still in the route. Aiken, Borders, and Bailey, the receivers now, in a three-wide set for first and ten. Durant. Pass fake out, sprints to the corner, and tries to pinpoint a pass to Aiken on the sideline, but good coverage there by Eric King, and overall good coverage by Wake defense. Well, Wake is, is solid, and this kid, King, played one of the better games we've seen uh, in our coverage this season last week against the Cavaliers. I mean, he was physical on the edge, great cover guy. I mean, these guys know they live on the edge. Any one play, you can be beat, especially if you don't get pressure on the quarterback. There were times last week where Virginia blocked him so well, he had a lot of pressure on him. Durant, first incompletion on the day, but he's got that Bosley Allen touchdown that's right on the scoreboard now. Second down and 10. Pass to the flats. It goes to Allen with a wide receiver screen, and he's forced out of bounds at the 39-yard line. He's going to be close to the first down. Boy, I have to give the third-team quarterback. I think we we really felt that North Carolina was feeling pretty good about itself. Uh, it had had some success, and there was no reason to think that that on a Saturday at Keenan Stadium that the Tar Heels wouldn't have a lot of confidence, wouldn't feel that they had some momentum going on the season. Uh, and with Wake Forest coming in, certainly they would expect to beat the Deeks. So I think uh, we expected a very tough afternoon on that particular day. Most of the snaps through Wednesday in practice. Yes. That can't go unnoticed. No. Because they, they're too sharp in the passing game now. They've not had their starting quarterback. Today. First and ten. Here's Williams. Best running play of the day for the Tar Heels. Gets out to the 49-yard line where he's very close to another first down for North Carolina. Now, Wake cannot afford Carolina had wins over NC State and Florida State and was feeling pretty good about where they were as a, as a football program. Uh, and so, therefore, the game itself seemed academic. I mean, Carolina was going to continue to roll a little bit in John Bunning's first year. It really helps you get push up front. Second down and a long one. Durant on the quarterback draw, and there's plenty of room. Durant to the Wake Forest 41-yard line. 
Many question whether or not the absence of Ronald Curry will help this team, will hurt this team. I maintain that it will hurt this team because of plays like that. He gives you oh, that more often yeah. not. Now, Durant to get that is key for North Carolina yeah, today. And he's developing into that. I mean, Ronald Curry is a tremendous talent, and Ronald gave them a lot of diversity in the offense. Now, Darian is really maturing. Now in Wake Territory at the 41. Durant back to throw the straight top complete to Brandon Russell. A former running back converted to wide receiver, and he's got it down to the Wake Forest 26 yard line. It'll be a gain on the play of 16. This young man will be frightening a year from now at quarterback. That offensive line is young. When we, I remember at the beginning of the season, they only had one guy with experience. That was Metz the senior, the center. Now they're starting to really be proficient in the passing game. First and 10. Aiken, Borders, and Russell, the wide receiver. Durant, back to the flats. It is complete. It goes to Borders. A defender, Caron Bracey, lost his shoe there. The ball up to the 21-yard line. It's a gain of six yards for North Carolina on the first down play. If you give up six yards on the quick little outside, you want to abuse the receiver. Some scores from around the country. Michigan up by a touchdown on Minnesota. Michigan State and Indiana tied in Big Ten action in the first quarter. Lots of action around the country today. Some big action in the ACC. Clemson, Maryland tonight. Big one, buddy. Florida State, North Carolina yep. State this afternoon. Rumbling in the ACC. Boy. Who's going to get that top ACC bowl bill? Could be the sugar or the orange. Durant back to throw on second down. Pass is complete. Touchdown, Corey Bailey. Woo, killing him. He threaded the needle, Doc, between two defenders and got the score. The kid is fearless. I guarantee you, Gary Tranquil is up in the booth going, oh, no, not that. He just had that type of ability where uh, he, could, he could go into another gear. He could do something special. And I think he began to become that type of player that you expected week in and week out for Darian Durant to do something very special. Durant's only missed one of ten passes, and he's got his second touchdown pass in the afternoon. Here's Jeff Reed to tie a North Carolina record. And it is through the uprights, 56 consecutive. Point after touchdown without a miss. The senior from Charlotte with the score, but it is Corey Bailey pulling down a 20-yard pass from Darian Durant, his second touchdown connection of the day. And the Tar Heels are out to a two-touchdown lead. Now, there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The new network that brings you nearly 150 games from conferences like the Pac-10, Big 12, and more. Plus, local coaches shows and news from around the country. This is the network college football fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. As we move to the second quarter, Wake failed to capitalize on a turnover when they missed a 37-yard field goal. North Carolina has first and 10 on its own 21-yard line. Welcome back to Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Darian Durant, who has been surgically sure this afternoon, gets the football back at his own 20-yard line after Wake Forest took it 14 plays, 73 yards, and didn't score. Willie Parker, the third tailback, to run today. Oh, that's not a good feeling at all. I mean, the other, when the other team has momentum, you know, it just feels like you're backed up in the corner and you just have to try and pull something out of your sleeve to get stuff going in your favor. Carolina with 219 yards, Texas A&M up by 10 over Oklahoma. That could shake up the BCS quite a bit. Syracuse, they're upset over Virginia Tech and Miami playing a depleted Boston College team. Here's Virginia Tech up a touchdown. 
and some Big Ten scores. Here's Durant to throw the screen, and it goes to Aiken complete. He squares the shoulders and goes. One man to beat. It's Brantley to try to hold him out. Can he beat this left man? He'll go all the way for the touchdown. That's how you draw it up, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 75 yards, Sam Aiken, playmaker. Not so much the design of the play, it's the guy you throw it to. But it did work outside. Great help on the edge. Carolina gave him the block, and that young man went into overdrive. On an innocent wide receiver screen. And now Jeff Reed. Has a chance to kick his way into North Carolina's record book. That's following Wake's best offensive drive. That's right. Following a turnover. Wow. The kick, it is good. And a new standard set here at North Carolina. Jeff Reed with the 57th consecutive. But this screen to the wide receiver, 75 yards. Sam Akins turns on the burners. Beats Marcus Magruder. We'll be back after these words from your local ACC station. Now, there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA. This is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. You're watching Fox College Sports. For more information on program listings, log on to foxcollegesports.com. NFL Sunday returns this September. The best damn sports show period. Weeknights on FSN. North Carolina added a field goal and led 24 to nothing at the half. Wake has the ball for the second time in the third quarter after recovering a Tar Heels fumble. The Demon Deacons are facing a second and 10 on UNC's 38-yard line. That is so close. Here comes Terrence Williams on first and ten. And Quincy Monk in pursuit from what is called the Mike linebacker spot. Spies Williams and knocks him flat after maybe a yard gain. What a play by Monk. He's so quick. You don't realize that he's 245 pounds. Fifth-year senior. He's one of those guys we talked about. He won't be around next year. 92 tackles coming into this game. He had 17 tackles in the loss to Georgia Tech. Second down. Play fake, and here comes McPherson. Big hole as he follows. He didn't do anything that uh, the coaches didn't want him to do that was going to make the other players look at him in a way that they're not supposed to be looking at the quarterback. James was a really good quarterback, good college quarterback, real solid quarterback, and uh, and it, it showed on the field. His senior year, was he had a great, great year. Defensive line. Well, what a play by James McPherson to get first down on the 11-yard game. He'll hand off this time to Williams. He'll go same side. This time Michael Collins and Tyson and rather Blake Henry will help lead him inside the 20. It was obvious that Wake Forest was going to try to make a living running the football. Uh, and, and that was very exciting. And it, it was a different brand of football uh, than the Deacons had seen in Winston-Salem for a number of years. What he has going, if these kids can simply get in the end zone, good things can happen. Move 21 yards on three plays. Big blitz by Monk. 
at the point of attack, he came in, shot the gap, and shot down Terrence Williams. I think that that defense sent six guys in the NFL draft from that defense alone. Yeah, so you know, going it going against that defense, we knew we kind of had our hands full because, just because they had so much you know talent. Third down and about four. Big play here for Wake Forest to try to keep this thing alive. Here's Davis on the corner, chased by Murray knocked out of bounds very close to the first down. You saw him go stretch. You gotta go for it. Yeah, it what an effort. Fabian was um, and just a guy, you know, whenever a big play wide receiver, I mean, whenever we needed a big play, tough too. He was, you know, whenever it was, we needed a play and needed a big play, like he made it. I don't care where the marking is, you have to bring out the dogs and let's roll. There it is. First down, Wake Forest. Big conversion. Anderson is out there on the wing. And off instead goes to Williams. And again, he runs into Quincy Monk. But I can remember the getting the halftime score and seeing Carolina leading Wake Forest 24 to nothing, knowing that Georgia Tech's going to play in Winston-Salem next week, saying, well, the Jackets are going to cruise. Tech's going to have it easy because this is Wake's last chance. I mean, they'd had a couple of nice wins, won some close ball games, but to lose today would kind of wrap it up. It's a beast. McPherson, here's the end around to John Stone. Stone, clear path to the end zone. If you can make it, touchdown, Wake Forest. He got around Ryan Sims and went 11 yards for the score. And the Demon Deacons take advantage of the North Carolina turnover. And Tyson Claybo and Michael Collins, those big hogs up front. Any other team in our conference would have taken him, you know, you know, in a heartbeat. And so just to have his speed, uh, you know, really gave, was really, a, uh, I mean, gave us an advantage um, going, playing against other teams in our conference. Tyson Claybo. And there's the point after by Tyler Ash. And all of a sudden, the complexion of this game changes somewhat as Wake Forest takes advantage of the turnover. John Stone for his second rushing touchdown, 24-7 Carolina. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. Is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise manifest. I'm Eddie Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. I'm number one with up staff. Nobody knows who's staff two, and we can't get the cockpit. The door won't open. NFL Sunday returns this September. John Bunning knows, said to Mike Hogwood at halftime, figures that Wake Forest would come out ready to play. Second down and 10. And off Nick Birdie is down to the ball game. Birdie, who rushed 70 yards for a touchdown last week, dragged down by David Thornton. He's a sophomore from Glen Allen, Virginia. And there's Thornton, who was a walk on. And won a scholarship in spring practice. Dort Thumper. Gain of two on the play will bring up third down and eight now for the Demon Deacons. When I walked to the airport, you know, on a band line, a lot of people say, hey, Dort, David. <laughs> David. I turn around, no, I'm not David. I'm not David. Blitz on by the Tar Heels. Pass is complete to the tight end, Thomas. Thomas heads into the secondary and is written out of bounds by Dexter Reed. He's going to be marked out at the 25-yard line. A flag down on the play. Late. I believe. Great call. That's a great call. 26-yard pass hookup. Our game plan in that game was a, was a run. You know, we were, we were a heavy running team. We, we ran the ball a lot, you know. And that wore the defense down. You know, we'd run, 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 and then you know, we'd all of a sudden go deep. 
and that, that opened up the pass, you know. So that, that worked out very well. Ray Thomas from Hamilton, Ontario. Incidental face mask by the defense, five yards into the run, first down. I want you to take a look now at big Ray Thomas. What he's going to do, he's going to knife through and get over in that angle. Now watch him. Now he can take it upfield, and it's a jailbreak. See the face mask. Oh, yeah. Oh, the end of good play. Right at the end. First and 10, handoff Nick Purdy. Breaks some arm tackles and squirts ahead to the 15 yard line. It's a gain of about five. Yeah, but it was a big arm. It was Ryan Sims. It was yeah. his arm. <laughs> you don't break that one. You might bruise it. If you don't break it. What a week for Nick Purdy, sophomore from Glen Allen, Virginia. Playing in his home state of Virginia last week and had to showing off. Showing, showing off. Well. Second down and five. All of the Carolina 15. And off Bernie again. Oh, good read. Got inside the block. Doesn't have the first down, but it'll be third down and one. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hawkwood. Well, Doc was right when there were a lot of words on the sideline. The uh, Carolina defensive lineman, and I mean the big names, Julius Peppers, Ryan Sims, they were upset with the way that they played, and they were encouraging each other. They feel that that last touchdown was on their shoulders. They don't want this one to be. This one could be because they're still moving in reverse. That was a good shift. That shift might have confused Confused uh, wait a bit. Ten on the game clock. McPherson. Hand off Bernie. Oh. Made a heck of a second effort. Dexter Lee in the mark. Stuffed it. We got a flag down on the play, however. Right at the line of scrimmage near the sideline. It's a lineman. It's got to be. It's got to be a lineman. Carolina was showing blitz. Well, you saw big, big Ryan Sims switch with Perkins. Here's Jack Childress with the call. Offside, defense, lined up in the neutral zone, five yards at the first down. It's not happening. No, I knew that, that had to be mine. He, he gets the word from the official. That's the fourth penalty of the day on the Tar Heels. Wake is yet to be penalized. And it is first and goal at the six and a half yard line. Johnson, I, I enjoyed the first half much more than this. <laughs> So his defense still has problems. His Wake's got their ground game in gear. First and goal. Hand off Bernie. Falls ahead to the five. This was a crucial time of the season for both Jim Grobe and John Bunning. Their teams had had some up and down moments. It was a turning point. The team that won this game had a chance to really go on and make a run through the rest of the season. Number 87. Spartanburg, South Carolina. Second down and goal. Bernie the long setback. Again, McPherson steps away from center. This is typical. They don't huddle. They wait and they see, and he'll look to the sideline for the call from his offensive coordinator who's up in the booth. Hand off end around Fabian Davis. Davis! Touchdown! Wait for it! You know, it wasn't really a big surprise that Carolina got up to a big lead. The, the big surprise, I think, for all of us was when Wake Forest came back. Because usually a program like Wake Forest, when they fall behind, the kids get down, and it's hard for them to make any kind of rally. But they did. And that's a tribute to Jim Grobe, and it's a tribute to where he's taken that program.